to session number 33 of Outer Ner What? Wait, what is this campaign? <laughs> What's it called? Outlander's <laughs> Guide to Ladarka! <laughs> Is that supposed Woo! to be a crowd thing? Alexander died to the dark, did you? <laughs> crowd cheering and clapping. Hello! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, God, that just freaked out my dog. Like, <laughs> he just like, tackled the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Nobody will know any better. Hi! Oh, poor guy. I'm glad to see you all here again today. I've missed you. Uh, I'm always a, 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 every time I'm like preparing things for this campaign. I'm I I'm always thinking of just how lucky and how blessed I am to have you as my players. It's it's oh. I'm always happy to be here on Sundays, and uh, I, I hope you guys have fun too. <laughs> Don't don't pull on the chains that are tying you to your chairs too much, okay? Or it might snap off. I'm rattle, hungry. rattle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's set the scene. Here we are, back on our table, and today's recap is provided to us by do 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 Dennis. All right, all right. Let's see if I can get through this. <coughs> <sighs> the session started with Talik's two near-death sequences, where he met the drow once again and engaged into a conversation. The drow doesn't have a name, but shows Talix a cube, which is pulsating with light, which leads the conversation about to where to the place they're in. The drow believes that the room they're in is a waiting room between life and death, and every time someone leaves the room, he gets a glimpse into the real world, but doesn't follow. Talix tells the drow about Vakana, since that was where he first saw the drow, and the drow asks Talix to introduce him to her. Back in the land of the living, the group discusses plans on how to take out the one who stares. They decide on sticking together, with Tekka and Cass being the distraction, running out looking for the one who stares, while the rest of the group follows. Tekka binds a blanket to his staff and swings it around while running at the one who stares to distract him. Before all that, Brook gives him the potion of light that he traded from Glimmer, but it goes kind of wrong. After drinking the potion, instead of <laughs> making the blanket glow, he shines light out of his mouth like a laser. <laughs> I was so happy when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> what follows is an epic chasing sequence until the group finally catches up to the one who stares, <clears throat> thanks to a mind sliver spell from Pontifex. Once the one who stares was pinned down, the group uses everything to restrict every piece of movement or action the construct could have. Then uses all their attacks on it till it finally falls. The danger has been beat. What awaits our heroes next? Find out on episode 33 on the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Yeah. 33. Oh my goodness. Where's my. Here it is. I don't know why I have like two inspiration dice on my table, and one is gigantic, and the other is because like... I is that the badonka donk inspiration? <laughs> no. Because that's the one that we scaled up to I... be huge. <laughs> no, I, I, I've been I've been putting the inspiration dice in my bag lately, so I have a collection of twenty three, uh, which like should be fun to look through. Like we have, let's see, doll inspiration, cat men, cat inspiration. Inspiration, but don't get an inspiration. There it is. All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, laser mouth inspiration. No, nice. laser now, mouse. All right. So. I have mouth. When last we left off, our heroes had just returned to the ruined tower with the remains of uh, uh, the one who stares. Talix has reunited with his horse, 
And the group meets up again with the armor bus too. Ah, that's right. <laughs> uh, in a moment, once they fix the uh, the collision <laughs> on the tower, don't don't touch anything. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's just you know, it's, it's fine. Oh god, it's not even loading in. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Can bring in your minis. All right. Oh, you got Duchess. Good. Um. Well. Oh. What is the, the plan from here? Uh, so we made an agreement to, or Pip made an agreement to help the mother find her baby? Babies? Baby? Yeah. Um, gotta find her baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, um,. Well, I I did tell her that that uh, if we helped her find her baby, then maybe she could help us kill the the one who stares. But we already did that, so <laughs> maybe we could just get them to help take down all the traps that are still around this jungle. Oh, well, if they know how, I guess. Um. So where are we looking? Are we uh, thinking maybe it's with that group that we met earlier? Something towards the uh, the fruit trees. Yeah, m maybe. I, I think if we find some of them, then it could probably help us find some others, right? Well, it'll just... be interesting to find out. Yeah, I'll, I'll go talk to her. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, we're back. <laughs> we killed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the armbuster was uh, lying down, and she uh, lifts up her head slowly and brings herself up on all fours, and uh, uh, lowers her head all the way down until she's like at almost uh, your height, and looks through the door. Um, the remains of the one who stares uh, are currently behind Pontifex, uh, carried by uh, his faithful floating disc. Um, and she sees that and then looks back at Pip. Uh, and waits. Um, th that means the jungle should be much safer so we can find your baby. But you still don't look like you're doing too good. Are, are you in good enough shape to to go look? I can't afford to wait. Okay, well, um, at, at least stay a little bit behind us, okay? Because there are still a lot of traps in the forest, so we don't want you to get hurt. Uh, the armor bus too. Just moves in a little bit closer and nudges you forward. Okay. All right, she's ready to go if you guys are. Have we, we have not taken a long rest, right? You have not. Okay. Um, okay. Because yeah, I think it's, it's still pretty like early, right? I don't really remember uh, how long we were no, holed up in that tower. No, it's dark. By now. I'm oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, we didn't long rest before we went after the right. one. Oh, stairs. right, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. you healed up everyone. Yeah. Okay. Hey, um... Any chance she can see in the dark? I can see in the dark. Well, so can I, to an extent. 
but well, we just have to be careful where we're leading her and everyone else. Do we plan on coming back here later? Uh, okay. Where are we going to rest? We are going to sleep tonight, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what does everyone think? Come back here or just sleep out in the woods? <laughs> well, if uh, the local wildlife has been dealing with this steering thing for a while, uh, perhaps they're giving the area a bit of a wide berth. This surprisingly might be fairly safe to sleep in the woods for once. But the area all around the tower has been rather quiet. I don't really even hear any birds. We're about to head out of this area. If we're going back to where those fruit trees were. So do you yeah. want to come back later, or just... Uh, about how far of a of a journey was it from those trees to here? It was pretty far. From what trees? From from where we're we're taking the Armabastu. Where you met the, like, the other Armabastus? Yeah, it's like three was, days travel or something. Yes, three days. Oh, so we're gonna have to. Okay, I see. Yeah. If um, we I are supposed to... that we, uh, I guess, move in that direction, and then once we come to sort of the edge of uh, the one who stares territory, that is perhaps what we call it for the night, get some footwork done. <laughs> okay. That is at least somewhat towards Erica if we're going that way. Yeah. Hey, Mama Armabastu. Do you have a name? Um. You guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mama Bastu. She, she she seems confused by by the question. Do do are you called something other than Mama? <laughs> <laughs> I am me. Okay. Their naming conventions are <laughs> difficult. I don't um, think animals generally have naming conventions, but I don't are understand. they all just me? Her name is me. It is kind of cute. <laughs> Mimi. Um. Yes, it is like a name that you give to one who is small or petite, despite uh, her hugeness. It is cute. Where, uh, Mimi, where did you last see your baby? Um, <laughs> Mimi <laughs> looks up at the tower where she, uh, where, where the staircase was destroyed under her weight. Uh, and then she looks to the left, to the right, and to the right, and pauses, and, and then shakes her head. And says, long time ago, um, that way. And she points roughly to the southeast. Uh, okay. Um, well, do you, you, you guys need to do anything before we go? Just need to sleep soon. Yeah. If we are to walk this jungle longer, we will need food. And Tekka will grab the one who stares uh, bow and arrows. Okay. That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, oh, hold up. Okay. The remaining errors are 13. Mm 
And if you'd like to add it to your inventory, the composite bow that the one of stairs has uh, has the same stats of a longbow. Got it. Okay. Southeast then? Southeast then. <coughs> oh no, I didn't I didn't separate my dice before the session. How how do Duchess and Mimi get along? <laughs> um I don't think I would want them to be that close. <laughs> <laughs> Duchess doesn't like to show uh, that she's ever worried or scared. She's keeping her head high, uh, but Talix, it's especially like to you since you're riding her, like every time the Yermabastu happens to just wandering a little bit too close to her, she, she flinches a little. I try to keep a wide verse. Um, and for this evening, as you uh, proceed cautiously through the jungle uh, using the uh, your means of uh, uh, illumination at your disposal, um, you move at a slow pace, both because you can't see too far and because you're uh, starting to get quite tired. Um, but as as Casimir mentioned, the, this area of the jungle is really silent, uh, um, unnaturally so, um, and it does seem that um, most animals have straight up been avoiding it. While, um, while walking, um, Casimir gets close to, yeah, to Brooke, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, tilts his head towards him and says, so, um, you still don't feel like talking to me, huh? I mean, I, I get it. It's this whole thing that uh, I've been keeping from you, and uh, um, plus you, you have your own wolf now to, to worry about. It's, uh, yeah. So sorry that I, I couldn't tell you. Rook goes to Tekka, or no, to Telex, and holds his hand up and makes like a signal or well, yeah. he forms his hands towards like a pen and paper thingy. Yeah, okay, Telex will lend it to you. Imagine that like as you... Take a few steps away from Casimir to go to Talix and, and take some paper and pen. Um, Casimir was so focused on uh, um, on what he was saying that he wasn't even really looking at Brook, more like looking straight straight ahead and a little down. And he just keeps on talking uh, without even realizing that Brook is gone as he goes goes on and says, "Look, it's uh, this 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 whole thing." Yeah. Be, being being a phantom just just means that being friends with anyone is difficult because because you have all these secrets you have to to, to keep and uh, uh, being a phantom basically means you have to be a liar and that well, you know it it's 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 it sucks. You know, I, I care about my students a lot, and I care about you and Sunny a lot, and it is... Well, whenever I think about this bond that you, that you two shared, it, it breaks my heart every time. I'm glad you and I kept in touch, but I, I always feel like I, I... I did you wrong. Gosh, I, I don't really know what I'm saying. It's just... Ooh, uh. When Brooke comes back, he puts his hand on his shoulders and gives him likes of paper, and uh, and it reads, "We will talk later." <laughs> Casimir holds the paper and glances at it and looks up at Brooke, and he he 
he looks like <laughs> he looks like he just broke up with him. Like he just he, <laughs> <laughs> like oh no, <laughs> this is the sentence that you don't want to hear from anyone <laughs> through text, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the colored one, can I say? Like he, he, he nails it through his gritted teeth and he just goes, he just goes ah, Okay, <laughs> yeah, alright, yeah, okay, later. Mm -hmm. um, Tekka, would you like to be looking for food on the way? Or like once you find a place to, uh, for, to stay for the night? Mm -hmm. Once we find a place. Okay. Then uh, for tonight, uh, the this brief journey uh, all the way up until roughly midnight or 1 a.m. As long as you uh, are able to go without uh, um, just... Until you run out of energy. Um, it's You're not going to be disturbed by, by anything. Alex is probably, like, trying to sleep on Duchess's back. Just yeah, uh, she keeps... in, in and out of consciousness. Uh, um. hmm. That just makes sure that you are safe. Alright. As for the night, um, I'll be taking a survival roll from uh, everyone who would like to... Um, Try to gather food. Okay. okay. I will I stay behind uh, with uh, Duchess and Mimi. <laughs> I'd be at disadvantage anyways. I think Talix is just gonna try to catch some sleep now. Yeah, maybe, maybe, Mimi doesn't really want to be too close to that fire. What did you say are we rolling? Perception? Survival. For hunting. Survival. Or gathering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and Sid, you can have it. Um, mm, nope. Sorry. <laughs> 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 okay. You might have gotten an advantage, but you rolled too well. <laughs> no. <laughs> no! That's not it! <laughs> um, Kazumi rolled a natural too. Um, so <laughs> we, <laughs> he's just... Yeah, he's distraught. Ah... <laughs> uh, Okay, one, two, three, four. Um, you were able to find enough food to feed the four of you for the day. The rest will have to use the rations. I'll use we'll rations. use a ration. Oh. No, too late. Uh, <laughs> what? I'm not eating meat, Talix. <laughs> Wait, how many people do we have to feed total? Oh, I assumed we didn't have to feed, uh... Um... Casimir, Casimir no, and Mimi? Yes, not Cassius. And, and not Mimi. Okay, okay, so just between the five of us, okay. I'm sure Tekka can find some, like, <laughs> nice, uh... Okay, Pip will take them. <laughs> I didn't even tell you what it was. Some nice uh, grubs in the dirt, yep. some worms. <laughs> Jams yep. in his face. Delicious. <laughs> Does Pip seem the type to complain, apart from the times when Pip complained? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we ignore all of those times. Uh, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Roughly by the time uh, um, that... You guys are uh, pretty much ready to go to sleep, and you're starting to figure out uh, your um, your shifts for the night. Um, with the one who stares gone and being far from the tower, um, and the fact that you didn't really come across anything dangerous on this uh, um, on this uh, uh, latest track uh, through the jungle. Um, you don't feel as paranoid anymore. Uh, perhaps making noises is um, not going to be the death of you. Perhaps you might even feel like speaking. Perhaps. <laughs> ah, the, Let's go. Yeah, the effects <laughs> of your madness have um, 
have gone out. So then uh, uh, we'll take the first shift. Brooke will ask to take a shift with Cass. The first one? Sure. <clears throat> take, uh, take second. I guess I'll take third. I'll take the, the last one, whichever one that one is. Pip will sleep the whole time. Yeah. He's a growing boy. Mm-hmm. Perception? Right? Uh, yes. Ah, oh, Sid. <laughs> Run the shifts by oh. me one more time. Uh, should that be a disadvantage? You are. You have a level of exhaustion. Yes. Yes, you should be. Okay. Oh, whoops. That's a three, not a five. Whatever. So the eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I I'll need the order again because I didn't write it down. So it's mm -hmm. Brooke, Casimir, then it's Tekka, then it's uh, Talix, then it's Pontifex. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Casimir is sitting pretty much like on the opposite side of the, of the fire compared to Brook and just twirling his fingers and occasionally glancing at the enormous ape just, uh, just 40 feet away from him. Brook waits a little bit. And then looks up to Cass. Um, before we start... Ah! Oh! <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. Yeah? Uh, what is it? You should probably know that I... The reason I have been keeping quiet wasn't because of your reveal. <laughs> the whole situation with all the traps and... The one who stares... I don't know. It usually takes a bit to make me feel uncomfortable. But this seemed pretty tense. And I feel like we got pretty lucky with how everything went. <clears throat> so, well, I, I am glad that we all uh, made it, of course. Do you want to say again what you wanted to say earlier? I think I missed a little bit of it when grabbing the paper. No, oh, it was nothing important. Just uh, that. Brooke raises one eyebrow. Nothing important. Yep. All right. Then tell me what's going on. Well, what with? Oh, nothing. You know, just... Ah. I mean, you turned into a wolf. That didn't happen before. Yeah, I suppose that's a bit of a newer development. Not, not, not that new. Um, I, I did. Uh, keep it from you? The last few times we met and talked. Because uh, okay. I'm supposed to keep it from everyone. Okay. Who told you this? Keep it? Well, it's... You know, it's it's our thing.
But you didn't keep it, right? I mean, you did show your form. I know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to try not to do that unless uh, it's really necessary. And I thought it was really necessary. You were not wrong. Do you, I mean... Well, I do feel bad for us. Uh, no, what, what, what are we calling her? Mimi? Uh, Mimi the mama boss too. <laughs> <laughs> I assume so. Pontifex mutters in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that you showed it to us, can you talk about it now? I, um... And I'm I'm trying, but I I can't tell you about it. Do you have it under control? Because there surely was a moment after we've defeated the Mimi. Uh oh, um when I tried to um get uh, uh to Tekka? Yeah, I remember that. Sorry about that. I, I it's I mean it's it's fine until it isn't. It, I I I have a good degree of control unless I am very badly injured. And then, uh, how do I put this? Instinct, instinct takes over. Hmm. Maybe that's why phantoms usually fight by themselves. Because nah. it surely is something. If you're traveling with a group, you should at least make them aware of, right? Yeah. That's. The price we have to pay to become phantoms. Um, we have to become liars, we have to keep secrets, and we have to be alone. And, uh, uh, Brooke, I... I... I think that that price as horrible as it is, it's still worth paying it. We do good work out here. We keep people safe. And, uh, I don't like it, but I think it's worth it. All right, be honest with me. Do you think there's anything we can do about this? Like this prize secret, not yours, just our phantom thing. Like you've been with the phantoms longer. Than I understand what it's for, right? It's to keep the secret, to <clears throat> not have everyone have these powers. These powers. But you said it yourself, it's keeping these secrets is becoming quite hard. There surely is something we can do, right? Uh, roll a persuasion check. Persuasion? Ooh. Okay. Casimir leans forward a little bit. Uh, he starts scratching his beard and uh, uh, looks under the fire, then makes eye contact with you and says, Brooke, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, you're right, I've been a phantom for a long time, uh, far longer than you have. And in my opinion, if this stuff, this stuff that, that I know, that we know, uh, ever comes out, the entire organization would fall apart.
I think we have to accept that uh, this is the suffering that we have chosen to endure. We hurt, so other people don't. Now, I've been apologizing to you all, all evening because I don't like it. I don't have to like it. But it's still for the best. I feel like it's going to come out sooner or later anyways, right? You saw it yourself, you can't hide that. How are you going to explain that to the others? What am I supposed to say? That's... That part is fine. Uh, they know, they've seen it. Just, um... Well, tell them that this is other werewolf that you guys are dealing with. That's uh, something I can help with. I I'm already looking into it, I've already... Uh, I've already uh, informed people in in the Phantom Guard about it, and uh, everyone is keeping an eye out. Is that werewolf one of us? No, oh, uh, goodness, no, not not to my knowledge. We don't have any uh, natives in our group. Hmm. He scratches his head. I know there's nothing we can do about it for now, but I actually had another question. Well, I hope I can answer it. With everything you have learned, right, from this group, you know our mission, you know what we're up to do. How do you think Bruno stands? Or what do you think Bruno's opinion would be on all this? Like Vakanas seed. <sighs> Brooke, the, the job of a phantom is to not have an opinion. We're supposed to do what we're paid to do. And stick to a... Some vague code. Just try to do our best. I... Am unsure if this is the right thing, but from what I've seen of your friends, they all have a good heart. I think you're... you'll figure it out. Hmm. I actually disagree. Not the thing about my group, but about us not allowing or being allowed to have no opinion. <clears throat> After all, we're all individuals, right? We don't have to listen to anyone. Not even Brunolf. We can choose what jobs we want to do. That is our choice. Right? Yeah. Um, yep. Brunolf does want all of us to make our own decisions, but we still have a, a reputation, and we still take care of the, well, the bad apples. I uh, well obviously don't tell Bruno but um sometimes I do worry go on it's just uh, uh, trying to do the right thing is not always enough Sometimes you have the best intentions, and you still end up hurting people. I don't know if anyone knows what we're doing, here in, on Ladaria. I don't think anyone really understands, truly understands, the people of this continent. We're just conquering it. Hmm. It, may, it may not look like it, but uh, that is what we're doing. A lot of the jobs that people try to get me to do are about, he does little quotation marks with his fingers, dealing with the Atara. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. 
Maybe you are. And he grabs his bag and actually takes out the bottle that Cass gave him in Simli Lalan. You want to share? Oh, yes, please. He stands up and he comes over to your side of the campfire. Oh, you have no idea how much I need this brook. <laughs> well, it's all yours. You can oh, have it. Yes! Uh, nope, I gave it to you. The first sip is yours. Alright. He takes the first sip and then gives it to Cass. Hmm, Casimir makes an effort not to empty the entire thing in one go. And... Cass, I have... I... I have a feeling that... Doing the right thing and only protecting the people from Plurna might not actually be the right thing. After all, this is... Or if I've learned anything over the past few weeks with the group, this is not our country, right? And a lot of the people, at least on this part of Ladaria are, even if they're like natives, not here by their own will, right? They're only trying to live their life as well. <sighs> Aren't we all? I have a feeling that there might come a time where doing the right thing for the Plurnans and doing the right thing for Lidaria, not the Lidarians, but just Lidaria as a country, or as a continent, rather, would not be the same. Besides this group, you're pretty much, well, not the only one, but you're pretty much the only one who knows about everything that's going on. And I also am worried that eventually if other people find out what we're planning on doing once we've made the decision, that they're going to hire some phantoms to come after us. Especially if they hear that a phantom is part of that group, right? Getting rid of the bad apple. Brooke. Casimir doesn't really continue that sentence. Uh, uh, he just looks up at him, um, wide-eyed at first, and then with this uh, um, sober understanding, uh, washing over his expression. I'm... I've said this before, but I'm kind of done serving for other people, right? Doing the thing for other people is a good thing so others can have for this country. I came here to escape exactly that. If you can, and I'm, I obviously can't force you to, but if you can, and if you do have some influence over, well, or are the friends of the Phantoms, and comes to a time where well, there must be a side chosen, right? If you can, put in some good words for us. Maybe plant some seeds. That what we're doing is the right thing. So it doesn't come to like a full battle. That would be very appreciated. Yeah. I mean... Of course, Brooke. I'll... I'll do everything in my power. Uh, and, uh... Well... If a day ever comes when... People do make the unfortunate decision to come after you... <laughs> um... 
Well, why don't you give them a good beating for me? Uh, maybe I was thinking that uh, this might uh, um, help out. And uh, Casimir slides um, the belt from his pants and hands it to you. <laughs> So, um, this is, uh, my little secret. Okay. Well, well I mean, <laughs> it's a belt. Yeah, well, it's, it's not just any belt. It's a, look at it. All right, I'm looking at it. <laughs> what do I see? <laughs> well, it does look just, just like a belt. Uh... <laughs> um, but there is a, a there is a pretty um, an orange uh, gemstone in the center and two more smaller gemstones beside it so it, it does look fancy um, expensive for sure and uh, the, the now that you think about it when Casimir handed it to you now that you're holding it in your hands um it doesn't seem halfling size at all, but uh, until a moment ago, it, it was. Huh. A resizable belt. Okay, what does Ye it do? Guys? Yep, yep, that, that's it. It's, it's a resizable belt. Now, this, this, uh, this will, uh, when, when you wear it, this will make you as strong as a giant. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, it it wasn't all just uh, training. I, I had a little bit of magical help. Don't, don't judge me. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, in the amount of times you this belt has saved us, I, 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 <laughs> I'm. Are you sure you don't need this? Well, ever since um, um this this whole thing, uh, the 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 werewolf thing happened to me, um. Uh, I've gotten a lot stronger. Uh, this thing is actually doing uh, um, almost nothing for me. So you can have it. Can I inside check that last sentence? Uh, yes, absolutely. Just to see if it's actually almost doing nothing for him. Um, to your dismay, he seems to be honest. He's not playing it up at all. Hmm. Alright. Thanks, Cass. And if they come after us, I will make sure that I'll give them a good beating. Especially if they try to touch any of the others. <laughs> They're lucky to have you, Brook. They really are. I, I don't know if they realize it. I think I'm as lucky to have them as they are to have me. I might be like their muscle, but... You saw Tekka, right? I mean... What training did he go through? Like, he is... He is he's pretty good. I'm not gonna, he could, not gonna lie, he could I, am, be one of us. I am a little scared of him. Well, he doesn't really harm anyone until he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't that good. describe you too, Brook? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I guess that, that's how this works, right? <laughs> okay. What are your plans? Like, repeat. The one who stares. What now? Um, probably going to let every phantom on the peninsula know about it. Uh, gather everyone who's um, still trying to, to come here. Uh, perhaps grab a couple of people and just go through the jungle and try to find all the remaining uh, uh, traps that might be scattered about. Uh, figure out what to do with that, uh, with that guy you guys left us with. <laughs> and then... 
Gotta look into that, uh, that uh, <sighs> werewolf. One with the gemstones? <sighs> Yeah, fair. Talking about Saskar and ah, uh, how much exactly does it cost to leave him in that cell? How long are you planning to leave him with us? I mean, if it was up to me, he wouldn't be in that cell, right? But I feel like this group is prone to detours, so <laughs> there is a chance that he might be there for a little bit. Like, we can't let him out, obviously. Can't really give him to the authorities either, because he would have to explain everything. And these people don't want to get rid of him. Brooke, you can't... You can't just put this off. I know you don't want him... You don't want to keep him in, in prison, but you, you gotta, like... Explain this to your friends. The money thing? No, that uh, he he needs to be dealt with. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was also trying. the money thing. <laughs> I know. Um, maybe. <clears throat> maybe when we make a decision tomorrow, right? Or. Whenever we find that baby Amaterasu, Amatara, well, the baby monkey, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, we make a decision on what to do next. Right, Maybe you can right. help influence them to take care of the Saskaran situation. Okay, fine. We're putting it off again until tomorrow. I mean, they're all asleep. Do you want me to wake them up? No. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> and like, he, he chugs <laughs> more from the bottle. No. Oh, oh, okay, there's like uh, one sip left in here. Here you go. Take it. Okay. And I'll empty the bottle. <coughs> all right. Uh, you wake up, uh, Tekka. I'm terrified of him. Don't be sad. Okay. And I go over to Tekka and gently shake his shoulder. Casimir pretends to be fast asleep. Throws himself on the ground. <laughs> That's actually what's waking Tekka up. <laughs> <laughs> Just Ka Casimir dive bombing into the ground, face first. Night went well. Uh, no problems yet. You can speak. Yeah, I, f I, I feel better. Thanks, by the way. That's a good idea. I wonder how I didn't come up. The jungle has worn us down. I'll be happy when we leave. Same. Rest well, Brooke. Yeah, you're I'll gonna be okay. Yours. All right. And Brooke goes to bed. Mm -hmm. Dennis, uh, you may add to your inventory a belt of heal giant strength. Okay. Cool, yo. Belt of heal. Mm hmm. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Puts it on his twenty one. Oh, it was it was, it was, a, great, it was a great reaction. I don't have to. Uh... Oh, it, it requires a human. Yes, it does. Can I can I attune to it while sleep? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, I'll do it in the morning. Okay. Damn. <laughs> okay. I. Oh 
god, did I write this down? I don't remember if I wrote this down. Hold on a moment. Scroll, 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 scroll. Yes! Okay. We're <laughs> good. Uh, the rest of the night uh, will pass by without uh, uh, anyone or anything disturbing you. Uh, you may take your long rest in your character sheets. <sighs> <laughs> Feeling good? Feeling better? Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone else still exhausted? Talix? I just had one level. Oh, nice. <sighs> <clears throat> All right. How's uh how's Mimi doing? Is she looking a little anxious or During your watches you occasionally saw her getting up and circling your camp. Um but she she seemed to be watching out for danger rather than uh being concerned about the rest of you. Um, and by the time you, you all wake up at dawn, uh, she's actually a lot closer to you. Waiting. Um, to you, Pip, Did in particular, sleep? would be... Uh, she looks better. She looks a little rested, but... It doesn't look like she's slept enough. Hmm. She's just taken eight short rests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 we'll find him. I promise. Mimi's uh, stern uh, expression uh, remains unchanged. We'll head out soon. Uh, Mimi moves away from you, jumps up to a tree, climbs up. The tree bends beneath her massive weight, and she leaps to another tree, and to another, and then she's out of view. Oh. Good luck. Mm. And people just sit back down, start twiddling his thumbs. Mm. The mother move would move faster than us through this jungle. Yeah. Uh, did she... Is she leaving, leaving, or is she coming back? I... I think she got impatient. She's just looking for a baby. And I hope she finds him. Well... Might be a good idea to head in the direction of those fruit trees either way. Is that where she was headed? No. Hmm. Just for us, whether we find the babies there or not, uh, might be good to know that we can stock up on a bit of food before we can get to the next city. Mm -hmm. How many days will we spend here searching for this child? Oh, none. Uh, this is just on the way out. There's a chance we might find the baby and maybe we don't. But we do need to get back to the city. My own, uh, my own rations are on kind of low. Uh, I was thinking, well, suppose we could discuss this. Uh, we could either go back to Simley Lawn or we could go to Arca, which I think is a bit closer.
we have walked this far, might as well. Can you repeat it one more time, Jason, what you suggested? Uh, are we going... I was just asking if we were going to recur Simulon. I think we all agreed we're going to Urka. I just wanted to double check. I am good with Urka. Okay. <clears throat> I'm okay with Urka as well. <gasps> the only... Look. You speak! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm... I'm doing better. <laughs> Must have found a lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to hear. <clears throat> uh, I'm technically okay with going to Erica. I would just like to bring up one more time that we're currently being robbed of our money. Currently more of my money with Saskarin being in the jail cell. I definitely um, want to get back to him as soon as possible, but, uh... Were... Were your... Were we going to meet some of your phantom friends in Urka by any chance? In any case, uh, you know, we'd I, probably I can, just be there... We'd uh, probably just be there know. long enough to resupply. Sorry. <laughs> what were you saying? I can let them know about the hmm. progress here in the jungle. We, we phantoms have our ways. Well, let's not even spend too much time there. Just go there, buy food, and leave. Along the road. Might be an easier way to get back anyway. Alright, and after that we have to take care of Saskaran. Like, sure. no more detour. <laughs> now that we have uh, this, maybe... Maybe we should actually consider seeing this Ten Heart fellow. Or not. I don't know. Just a possibility. But yeah, one way or another, we need to do something with him. And, uh, Pontifex, uh, as you as you, as by, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the habit that you guys have formed by now of checking Orm, generally in the evenings and the mornings, uh, um, the, the book brings up the possibility of perhaps, uh, um, if, if you guys don't mind at all, perhaps some point in the future, if if it's no bother, perhaps you could um, <laughs> go see his home? Go see what? His home. Mm. Jamuel's home. And not now, book. No one asked you. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> Crotch the old man character. Where is where's where's Jamil's home? Orm. Where is Orm's home? Well, it's oh, the same it's thing. The same, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it? said, it said Are Jamil's you so home. sure? <laughs> it said Jamil's home, it did. In the in the summary. The doghouse is outside of Jamil's home. <laughs> uh is it is it an Aria by any chance? That's what I would assume, but I don't know. Hey, then we have arrived. You're welcome. What? Oh. Huh? What? Hey, what? Huh? <laughs> It is uh, some kind of pocket dimension of sorts. It is fairly common among what? wizards. What? Common? Huh? Uh, it is a fairly low level spell to do something similar. Is it? To do what? Uh, you can make a. Uh, how do I explain this in layman's terms? You can make a door to a place that is its own space and uh, does not share it with uh, any of this space here. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, the more complex the structure, the more 
it gets exponentially more difficult. Uh, a low-level wizards can usually do something to just make a small space, but a tower is something. Uh -huh. I've never encountered one like that. And he's put doors to it <coughs> everywhere, all all around the peninsula. And anyone can go on them. Are there a lot of people that go there? No. Hmm. Well, if I... Okay. Uh, that certainly sounds like something interesting to see. Can... does... wait, hold on. Does... if you're in the space where there is no space, can you exit out of another door somewhere else here? Uh, that is far beyond my knowledge. Oh. Uh, Usually the ones I have encountered wait. are one way in, one way out. Wait. What? What does that even mean? Can I make some Where kind is of... A Check. Uh, has Where... artifacts ever heard of something like this? Like, is it is it able to like change like normal doors into doing this, or are they like specific doors? I don't know. I just yeah. I go ahead and roll like... an arcana check. Yeah, I guess like on the level of absurdity, how how <laughs> deep in the magic levels would this be? Yeah. Or just just out of my own curiosity, where, for instance, is another door? Roundabouts. Just any other door. Aside from the one by Simlilon. So the space is at least that large. Oh, I know the lake he's talking about. I, I highly Fun doubt effects. that the the tower is the size of the Ladarian Peninsula. It is simply the the entryways to said tower are scattered about because yeah. they lead to a place that is not here. So, but how the laws could, of how distance could, and such do not apply. How could the doors be that far apart if the tower isn't that large? What? That doesn't make any sense at all. Point of effects, yeah, based uh, on your chat. What is this non Euclidean no teleportation magic, Alex? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> what is so, so difficult to grasp? It is a simple uh, feat for so magic. We could, we could Some hop. races can just do it innately. So what? we could just hop in a door and take. A uh, high-speed nether railroad <laughs> halfway across the world. In, no, it in does like not move minutes. you the distance. The distance simply does not exist. You take the distance in the real world and divide it by eight. No, there is no mathematics. <laughs> it does not exist. <laughs> He's like having an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect you to understand, but I cannot humor these terrible ideas. This is some house moving castle stuff right Fallacy here. is unacceptable. They're halfling sized. Uh, this sounds like something we definitely need to find. Like anything from the Arcana track. Well, I was trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he's having to put his brain on pause to lecture these people. 
Okay, so uh, Pontifex, your understanding is that indeed uh, the tower likely exists in um, in a different place. Um, you wouldn't use the term uh, plane uh, in this case, but like uh, its own pocket dimension. Uh, sort of like in the same way that... Uh, um... No, that's not a comparison I can make. Um, but... It, it's clear that it takes a specific kind of construction. It can't just be any door. It has to be a door that has been specifically made for that purpose. Um, and uh, it seems like, indeed, the, the, if this is true, um, this might give you easy access to multiple locations across the continent, which would be incredible. Be very useful. Of course, you know, this kind of really high-level magic would be, uh, first of all, unlikely. Do you doubt there is anyone alive who would hold this kind of power? And the idea that Jamuel can do this and nobody knew is uh, shocking and uh, difficult to believe. Uh, not to right. mention that uh, surely there has to be some degree of danger to it. Uh, I think he's going to compartmentalize most of that and instead just focus on lecturing the inaccuracies of the group. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going through his head at the same time is that uh, whatever this this pocket dimension tower thing is uh, it's very unlikely that Jamil actually made this thing and that it was made for him uh, and Pontifex's head is immediately going to his parents so uh, and so... Alex can I own a kind of check from you too please oh um okay <laughs> Hey, oh, I thought that was a 19. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, this old conversation about a tower that doesn't exist anywhere and can be accessed uh, anywhere, it's... Uh, you're not really sure why, but there's something about it that is... that sounds... familiar? No, not familiar, but like something that you know of? Or no, you don't really know of. It's a, it's a strange feeling, almost like a deja vu kind of feeling. And you feel like there is something uh, that's right there at the tip of your tongue. Some, some kind of knowledge that is yours or close to you, or just within grasp. But you can't uh, you can't even quite place the, 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 the origin of this feeling or the reason why you're feeling it. And it's uh, just like... Just like a deja vu, the feeling fades away pretty quickly, and you're just left with the memory of having experienced it. Hmm. So, so you're telling me that we could walk through a random door, just just right next to us, and then walk out of a different door? And be at the the end of the peninsula. Uh, that sounds correct. Uh, I believe you're focusing too heavily on doors and buildings and such, and just imagine simple teleportation magic. It is covering a vast distance uh, in an instantaneous amount of time, as if the distance did not exist. What? That's a thing. That's uh, very easily a thing. I'm going to withhold oh, wait, the mentions you, of you, you being the dog. And <laughs> professor, are you able to do this? <laughs> uh, these teleportation bits? Oh. Uh, uh, no, I never uh, split the time to do it, but if I were to <laughs> find a small manuscript or something, I could probably do it in the span of like an hour. <laughs> or two. Uh, two. Hmm. Two hours. What? What did you teach people? <laughs> Oh, I never taught people magic of any capacity. I was taught magic. 
You're a professor. Yes, I taught about the, the, the history and theology of Vakanath and the deities amongst her branches. Uh, I was a cleric. Am a cleric. Sort of. I suppose I'm still a cleric. I haven't been excommunicated or <laughs> anything, but uh, I no longer... Uh, I don't think I'm ordained. <laughs> But, uh, yes, I was a, a professor of history and theology. This whole time, you were the chaplain. <laughs> uh, guys, yeah, Casimir leaps to his feet. Uh, guys, hold thing. on, quiet, quiet, quiet. Uh, Are you hearing that? And then you hear branches snapping, the creaking of a tree bending, and uh, the ground shakes as uh, uh, Mimi comes back. Oh, Mimi. Uh, Kazumi relaxes and sits back down. Uh, and Mimi comes uh, near to the campfire and drops on the ground uh, a large amount of fruits. <gasps> oh. oh. Nice. Thank you, Mimi. Are they ooplos? Um, there's shachis. Um, then there are... Uh, <laughs> all right. There is a gi there's jike paws um, that are just <coughs> sort of like, uh, imagine like they're shaped like a hexagonal prism. Like if you cut it in slices, you'd get uh, hexagonal uh, shaped slices. Um, it has a green hairy skin that you have to peel off and a large seed inside. Um, and then there's water mangoes uh, that are sweet, juicy and bright orange. And this one, the peel is straight up toxic. Um, it will give you, it, it will give you tummy aches. Ah. Hip starts eating. <laughs> <laughs> I go for the water mangoes. Wait, I don't think Pip's ever had a jack paw. He will. He'll try to eat the seed. <laughs> yeah, like what? What part of it are you supposed to eat? <clears throat> uh, the 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 pulp inside. Okay. Uh, Just sort of like take it by both peel, ends and like, twist it. <laughs> the peel, like imagine it's sort of like kiwi peel, in that like most people would find it like not good to eat, but you could. The water mango is the one where you want to absolutely avoid the peel, and it's like it's it's thick and soft, sort of like a bananas. <clears throat> uh, and the seed of the jack paw is large, like that of an avocado, but the uh, oval shaped. Mmm. Mmm. So, Wait, so what I, are you I, doing? You're gonna choke on that? What? No, I'm fine. So, uh, oh, quick! Someone punch oh, him in the stomach. Oh, oh, oh. So, are you still got to come? Are you still coming with us to look for your baby? <laughs> <laughs> or baby? Wait a minute! I'm the one eating, and my voice is coming out of squeak. <laughs> <laughs> squeak so hides the, the fruit. <laughs> squeak hides the fruit it was munching on. <laughs> squeak eats the water mango. Water mango skin. <laughs> I could do ventriloquism. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of um, always are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mimi says, you promised. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, You help. Mm-hmm. I keep you, guys you ready? safe. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, well, lead the way. Uh... <laughs> Mimi lifts Pip up. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> it puts him on her back. And she starts heading off. <clears throat> Is it can Just it be a... assumed that I attuned to the belt in the whole yeah. morning? There was there was or... the whole breakfast okay. time. There was about an hour okay. of talking. Uh, <coughs> like, uh... Okay, okay. Do you think she's holding Pip as like collateral? <laughs> Like, if we don't get her baby, we... I am the good She has a new baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> um, 
All right. Okay. <laughs> Who's leading? I. Mimi. Monkey. Yeah, I guess. Uh. <laughs> Mimi and I. He seems to know what direction they went, so I guess we just follow her. Well, do you want her to take you to the last place where she remembers seeing your baby, or do you want to take her to where you met uh, all the smaller Armabastus? Well, how about we ask her <laughs> uh, if the if the baby was traveling with a group of other babies? Yeah, school trip. <laughs> um, Mimi tells you that uh, Mimi tells you that he was alone mm. Okay So we'll go wherever Mimi's m maternal Instincts say we should go mm. Okay Hey when we get to Urca Can we get a Airbnb For Mimi and me You are so hung up on magical doors that lead to extra places, and then you go and mention an Airbnb. Airbnb. You are, of course, speaking of the bed and breakfast in the airplane. Yes, <laughs> the plane of air. The the yes, the plane of air. Not no, we don't have planes. Don't we don't have planes in this world. <laughs> All right. I know. The, the world is made of four planes overlapping. <laughs> He's going to go on a 10 minute tangent explaining <laughs> are the, they planes the or origins are they bubbles? of everything. <laughs> now we're talking about my study. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Pip, since you're basically the one leading the group, although you have no control over where you're actually going, you're just trying really hard to hold on onto this enormous ape. Um, and eventually you figure out you can, you can sort of like grab onto her fur and she doesn't <laughs> really seem to mind. <laughs> Look here, you little shit. <laughs> and the whole, the whole journey for the entire morning is mainly Pontifex talking. Um, Pip, the Nothing one thing of, of interest, uh, that you uh, come across today um, as the this, those few moments when the canopy opens up and you can see the sky it's uh, pleasantly clear there are no clouds inside uh, and but where you are all the way down here at the bottom of the jungle uh, everything feels uh, despite being in the shade it's hot and uh, humid um, it doesn't feel too good and eventually all of you find yourselves uh, uh, sweating uh, and then the further you travel the more um, life begins to return to the jungle uh, the mosquitoes and the flies start bothering you again I tell um, them not to <laughs> Pip the mosquitoes leave you alone would you what? kindly piss off nice <laughs> you can just ask and they won't teach you? Have you ever tried? <laughs> I mean, I usually use sign language. Pontifex <laughs> is trying to catch and eat them. <laughs> well, for the rest of us, I can give us the, uh, the stuff. No, no, use it on yourselves. I'm hungry. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'm just using three potions. He's trying oh. to catch mosquitoes out of the air with his tongue. <laughs> Does Spotify's tongue extend, or is it just like... <laughs> no, <laughs> he's just an old guy, just meh, trying to <laughs> grab things. His hands are full. What the fuck? It's such a weird mental image. <laughs> I'm a frog, shut up. Ribbit. Oh, my God. Look, I don't judge you for your quirks. Don't judge me for mine. That is kind of racist. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Pip. Um, you end up spotting something on the ground um, that almost shimmers, and so it catches your eye. Um, <clears throat> Mimi is 
passes it unless you want her to stop. Something shimmered in the ground? Yeah. Um, I, I, I would ask Mimi to, to stop for a second and point it out to the others. Uh, yeah, okay. Mimi slows down and you point down at the ground. Could be uh, a trap thing. And the, uh, the rest of you, uh, what you find uh, is uh, um, it, it's, it's not a, a trap. Um, it's like you just came across the shedding of a snake, but with dozens of legs. Um, that's all that's left of it. There isn't the actual animal. It's a, uh, it's a uh, pretty, uh, big for, uh, for a snake. Maybe so like the exoskeleton of like a giant centipede, basically? Is that what I'm... Um, kind of. But more than a centipede, it's like dozens of legs instead of, uh, uh, more. Like, it's two dozen? Uh, sure, two dozen. <laughs> um, and the, the color, it's, uh, um, of the, the, the shedding, uh, is, uh, red and uh, purple and, uh, where is it, and orange. It, it shines almost like the, in the same way that Talix's tent does. Can I try to identify what creature this would belong to? Yeah, sure. Roll a nature check. Nice. Oh my goodness. Wait, why is that not broadcasting? There it is. I... I'm rolling so oh, bad. Uh, with a 14, actually, you know what this is. Oh, um, cool. It's a it's a reasonably common uh, uh, common animal. It's not unique to the jungle. Uh, you've seen it uh, uh, around the uh, Ladari before. Um, although you've seen different colors, you've never seen one that was red and purple. Uh, you've seen green ones and uh, brown ones. Uh, this is an Asjut shedding. Are they like? Poisonous insects with stingers? What, what do they what do they do? Uh alright, picture a snake with <clears throat> about twenty legs and uh, uh, about eight <laughs> feet long. Um, okay. it's pretty it, it's it's a uh, um it's big enough that it could bite your entire hand. Um Did you say hand or head? Hand um, okay. so, bigger so ones like could your... do your head too. Could, could bite oh. your head too. Um, and uh, tell us, you know, that the, the, the shedding actually can be quite valuable. But, so are they, like, dangerous? Uh, oh, yeah, they are. Okay. They have a poisonous Tell us we'll pass bite. along this information. Huh. Uh, uh, so this is this is just the shedding of one. Mm -hmm. If we look never... if, if we look around, do we see any living one? <laughs> um, roll a perception check. And maybe look for tracks. Yeah, perception or survival if you're looking for tracks. I'll look for tracks. Yeah. They have a <laughs> they have very specific kind of. Uh, they leave behind uh, a very specific uh, and very easily recognizable set of, uh, of uh, footprints uh, as it's there is always a lot of dots and then a line in the middle which is where it drags uh, uh, like most of its bo lower body um, and you don't find the tracks like that and Pip doesn't spot a living one around what the one any huh Mimi looks a little bit uncomfortable um, when you start picking up the the shedding you found. Oh, it, it's okay. It's it's not living in its skin anymore. It has new skin. Uh, we should keep an eye out and 
I've never seen one of this color before. But... Well, let's just assume it's venomous and terrible and... Just keep an eye out for anything with these colors. Did Talix take it? I, I will if... Yeah, I'd like to. Go for it. I, okay. You said purple, uh, red, and... Orange. Orange. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> there are moments uh, uh, during your journey when you hear movement uh, in in the trees, um, and you always jump and you look around and you um, make sure that nothing or no one is following you. Uh, and occasionally there are animals that look at you curiously or um, with with some interest or just uh, uh, try to avoid you. Uh, in fact. All of them try to avoid you. Uh, it seems that the presence of Mimi among your group is uh, uh, keeping away pretty much everything else. Um, uh, yeah, and towards the middle of the afternoon, uh, Mimi stops and uh, begins looking around. You're just in another stretch of the jungle. Uh, the only thing here of note is that you you are um, uh, you are in an area where it's really easy to walk in a certain direction to the east uh, as some kind of really large animal, possibly Mimi herself or something close to her size, has moved through here. And there's a lot of trees that have just fallen over and there's this, this path that has uh, pretty much opened up. Oh. Say, Mimi, how old is your son exactly? Young. Small. Not that big? Small. Did you do this? No. Should we check it out or keep going? Where? Is my baby. <clears throat> uh, pip, pip, pip. Is this around where where we're supposed to be? Like, is this around the destination? Or would this just be going off track? Uh, this seems to be where Mimi has stopped. Um, so this, this okay. would be the last place where she saw her baby. Pip would just like let out a, a loud animal call, trying to get the attention of another um, uh, uh, what are they called? <laughs> Armabastu. Uh, roll uh, an animal handling check. Okay. Okay, uh, you call out. Uh, Mimi turns around at this. She she like looks back towards you, and uh, and then relaxes a little bit. Uh, your your call is uh, uh, pretty much perfect, but there is still no reply. Mm. I'm starting to get a little worried, guys. We have no leads. Let's follow these tracks. All right. Alex is going to arm up <laughs> ahead of time for once. Uh, Alex is taking the lead? I just said he's in front of armor and stuff. Oh, oh. I mean, you can if people want to. Yeah, no, I, I just hadn't. I just see what you said. Um. Mimi can lead down this pathway. Okay. 
Do these tracks look fresh? Like someone's like very recently barged there's, through here? Yeah, there's um, like broken trees and stuff, right? <clears throat> like, are they still wet? I'll, I'll take a survival check from the both of you. Best roll so far. <laughs> uh, the these trees have been broken for a while. Um, that's simple enough for you to see they've started drying out. Uh, some of them even at the at the at the base of their stumps, uh, they started to um, to grow back uh, new new uh, leaves, new branches. Um, so it's definitely been like this for months at least. Hmm. Um, but whatever actually passed through here, that's hard to determine. Uh, the weather has changed many times. Uh, uh, lots of animals have been through here, and uh, the actual culprit is uh, is too difficult for both of you to identify. Oh. Well, at least it doesn't seem to be something that we're going to face imminently. And it's probably not something that took the baby. Maybe you just wandered this way, though. How... How long has your boy been missing? <laughs> Days. Okay, well... We'll keep looking. Hey, uh, Cass. If we happen to get near another one of these creatures, would you be able to... You know, smell that? Y yeah. Uh, easily. The machine, that, that was a different thing. I uh, didn't really smell like much, but... Yeah, absolutely. Alright, well, I guess just let us know. Uh, as if to, like... Um... As if to, like, show it, uh, he just, like, uh, lifts his head and takes a deep breath. And then he says, well, not here. Let's go. Uh, that way or that way? He points to the left and to the right. That way. Pip points forward. <laughs> uh, well, you know, this, 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 this path. You know, the yeah. world is divided into hexagonal slices. <laughs> so. <laughs> so geographically, there is only two hexagonal planes left. <laughs> Whichever way the path goes, you guys think? I just follow along the path and see if maybe, maybe you wandered down it. Yeah, the path goes like this. So, I don't know. <clears throat> would they would they walk along a path rather than swing through the trees, though? I don't know. <laughs> What does Mimi think? <laughs> what well, does it seem like Mimi's been swinging through the tree? Is someone just bending them out of her way? Right? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like the path of least resistance would be the, the one they would go to. And they don't really seem like prey animals. They seem kind of like the apex of this whole area. So probably the path. Hmm. <laughs> Right. Uh, Pontifex says in his accent and not Matt's. <laughs> <laughs> so, towards this? The path. Yes. Okay. Uh, eventually, on the way, um, you end up spotting uh, um, a partially open panel on the ground uh, that is uh, fits the design of the traps that you've seen so far um, and it has been laid out right in the middle of this open path uh, but like I said the, the, the top part of it is partially open you can actually see into the hole um, the it, it, and in this state it's it's not hidden at all oh tell me there ain't no baby in there please tell me there ain't no baby in there don't do this to me. Uh, panel, you see. What, what sort of trap is it? Is it like, 
you know, another pivot spikes. Can we... Yeah, it, it fits that kind of trap that you've seen before. Yeah, definitely we need to look in and see what's up. Um, and as you get closer and cautiously look in, uh, you see a glinting of metal. Uh, a broken machine lying on this uh, set of, uh, of uh, wooden pikes. Huh. What kind? Uh, it's hard to tell from from above. Uh, you just see all the metal pieces and gears. This is unusual. I need a. Th we should uh, we should check and see. Is there any chance this would be one of Tenard's machines? Possible. Well, let's. Right. Here, I'll, I'm gonna try to go down and check it out safely. <clears throat> um, I've got a climbing kit I could use. Probably good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's plenty of trees that you can secure yourself to, and then gently lower yourself down. It wouldn't even take a check with with your equipment. Um, the, these traps are dangerous when you fall into them uh, face first, uh, but climbing in is easy enough, and you can actually find like this, this in in the space between the spikes, you can safely put your your feet down. Um, and uh, based on what you can see down here, uh, this is a machine that used to be in the shape of uh, it's actually one almost identical to one you've seen before. Uh, this is shaped like a lion. Ooh. Uh, any chance Talos can look for the parts that would have the signature? Uh, you know exactly where to. You know exactly yeah. where to look, and sure enough, uh, you find the letters O T H at the bottom, at the uh, belly part of it. Yeah. All right, Talos will bring that up with him. Show it to the others. And this uh, this machine is so big that it ended up just jamming the whole mechanism. Wonder if it was after us. <laughs> after all, we know probably. So we should be aware of these things here too, huh? Yeah. Well, at least I guess. Uh. Shall we fill the hole like before? One more trap disarmed for future inhabitants. Mm. <laughs> that seems good. Yeah. I'll help. You take some time to just fill in the hole. Uh, with the remains of the lion already in there, uh, it's not too long uh, of a job, although it still takes a good, like, half an hour or so. And then you're ready to continue. Uh, and you proceed following this uh, easy path through the jungle until... Casimir holds up a hand. Wait. Shh. You hear that? And all of you are listening, but uh, you don't know what he's talking about. I think it's safe to say at this point that you're just going to hear everything first, Cass. Oh. <laughs> uh, what do you hear? It's, well, it's... Um, <clears throat> he turns back and points at Mimi and says, Well, it, it, it sounds like her. But younger and more boyish? No, 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 it sounds exactly like her. Oh. Mm. Okay. Well, Either more on a bus tools or perhaps another uh, noise projector thing. A lure. Oh. That's true. In which direction? 
um, Casimir points a bit more to the right compared to the direction where you were going. Nah, I, I can lead you. Just uh, mm -hmm. watch, watch for those bushes. Um, there's some thorns over here, and he just starts like heading <laughs> off. And um, leaving the path means uh, the uh, the undergrowth here is pretty thick, and in some places it's as tall as him and Pip. Um, I need like a negative version of my spike for the spell. <laughs> spike reduce. Yeah. Reduce growth. Fireball. Blunt growth. The spikes just Fire. retract back into the plants. <laughs> hey, pumpkin. Um. As Casimir begins to struggle a little bit, um, the uh, Mimi takes the lead and just pushes right through the undergrowth, uh, opening a path uh, that's easy enough for the rest of you to follow. And yeah, after a little bit, you see that her um, her legs are bleeding slightly, but most of her fur and just her, th her thick skin seems to um, easily um, take the brunt of it and uh, um, it doesn't hurt her as much as it would hurt you. I mean, she's um, she's enormous. Her skin's probably thick enough to be able to some thorns. Mm -hmm. Basically just little scratches here and there. Um, and then at some point she stops. She tilts her head. And then she uh, runs off. Ah, with, ah. Wait, wait, Mimi, it might be a trap! With a yeah. oh, hold on for dear life. <laughs> it's holding on for dear life. <laughs> oh, we need to go after them. Alright, just be careful and look out for traps, okay? Right. Uh, and uh, Pip, there comes the moment when she leaps up into the air and grabs onto uh, uh, the, the top of a tree and begins to swing from branch to branch. Uh, I, I need to roll uh, an athletics check. Okay. Athletics! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, what? You climbed trees, I thought. <laughs> Uh, and Pip, you feel yourself slipping uh, from her back. You are about 50 feet up from the ground, and you just 50. begin you begin falling, and then you feel yourself getting caught by a leg uh, from a leg. And uh, <laughs> Mimi places you back onto her back, and she keeps on going. Um, you and are no baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, until the two of you reach this, uh, uh, it's a um, it's a bit of an opening in the jungle. The trees are uh, 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 keep a wide distance from each other, um, and you can see far away. And the the terrain is slightly elevated compared to to the surroundings. Not as high up as the tower was, but it's more like a little hill of sorts. Um, and now you're hearing it. This this sound. Um, the same kind of noise that Mimi makes, but uh, it doesn't mean anything to you. And, and oh, as no. she's frantically looking around, um, she, she uh, Mimi is is uh, uh, grunting and seems anxious and even angry. And she says, um, she says, "Who who is she? Who is she?" Mimi. She has my real. baby. It's not real. It's another trick. Trick. Why? It's it's just another one of those things that 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 machine left behind, I think. We could get closer and see though. But just be careful, it might be a trap. Um, Might want to wait for the others. Maybe just out. Okay. <laughs> uh, she starts pacing around in the area. Um, the group eventually uh, catches up, and uh, Pontifex eventually also catches up to the others. Um, 
but uh, during the time it takes a party to, to reach where Mimi has gotten, you find uh, a whistle that is uh, uh, shaped in the uh, head. It's made of wood and it's carved to resemble the shape of an arbabastu. And uh, uh, the noise is coming from it. This one too is uh, um, impaled on top of, wood of a wooden spike and it's actually placed up on a tree where there is more uh, wind blowing through it. Maybe just climbs up and uh, uh, with, with your directions just plucks it and brings it down. That's the moment when the rest of the group catches up. It was another trick. And where's the trap? Mm. Oh, it's gonna start looking around, up in, whether it's up in the branches or along the ground. Mm -hmm. I'll take an investigation check from everyone. Ooh. I actually am proficient in that one. Here comes day 30. Hey! <laughs> My highest roll tied. Oh no! Oh! <laughs> Dude, you're not allowed to get those. No, that's okay. <laughs> awesome, you're not allowed to get those. Sid, I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> well play, well play. <laughs> um As um Hold on. Uh, 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 here it is. Okay. Uh, it's Brook, Pontifex, and the Casimir uh, that are the first ones to notice. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, movement that has taken place at the base of this tree. Uh, lots of tracks that have overlapped so much that they're pretty much uh, uh, indistinguishable. Um, they're, 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 they're too hard to identify, but it seems like uh, something has spaced around the tree. And as the three of them spread out uh, uh, to look around uh, that area, uh, they eventually start hearing something. Now that the whistle has been taken down, uh, there is another noise <clears throat> of, that sounds pretty much like an Arma bus too, but uh, uh, far younger. And the three, the three of you, uh, come upon a small, um, a small black-furred ape that looks uh, like the ones you met before, but a little bit smaller. This one you could even, uh, you could even pick it up yourselves. Uh, and it's sitting down, uh, looking down uh, at his own ankles and uh, whimpering. Oh no. Wait, who's there? Brook, Pontifex, and Casimir. Where are the others again? Um, you, you all spread out to investigate, so they're, they're not too far. They may be like two or three minutes away from you. Pontifex, can you do something about that ankle? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, li likely. Uh, would this just be... Is this like a skill check or would this be like a healing thing? Well, um, you... As you approach to take a better look, um, the uh, the small armabastu pull, um, hears the approach and tries to pull away from you, and you notice that one of his legs is uh, tied with uh, with a piece of rope. Oh. Can this spell just un? Uh. Uh, the, uh, when in doubt, summon the wub step orb. 
What? Uh, <laughs> the thunder thing that I've blown all the machines. No, no I understand. It's a roof. Uh, it's a roof. Uh, 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 I don't have any way to deal any kind of <laughs> slashing damage. It's, it's a. <laughs> they, they, they're terrifying. Why do you need me to do this? Brooke, you do it. Uh... Just cut it off. I'm gonna leave it intentionally vague. What? <laughs> How many people does it take? Uh, maybe, maybe you need to better explain the situation. <laughs> he's just no, tied to a have post. Any magical ability to sever things. So how he's about just the man with the slicing sword? <laughs> All right, I will approach. <laughs> Wait, you no! Know, the last time Brooke approached something tied up, he fucking murdered it. <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness, uh, okay, can I just try to mage hand and undo the rope? Wait, you can't hear that. Telix isn't here, he can't be in your head. I can approach it, it's okay. No, this is I have just mage the... hand, I can explicitly do this. Uh, okay, uh, so both of you approach. Uh, and the armor uh, buster Hell like... no, I don't, I stay 30 feet back. Sure. I would approach uh, slowly and with my hands <laughs> raised, like with the palms towards the... And there's a third floating spectral six-fingered hand next to his. Try to look into his face to see its intentions. <laughs> uh, Brooke, roll an animal handling check, and Pontifex, you can roll a sleight of hand check. <laughs> can I? Can I roll sleight of hand with my spellcasting ability? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it's dying. It's, it's dying. It's dead. Brooke is ready to kill it. <laughs> Jason was My right. Oh, it's it's, it's <laughs> out of the hell. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Uh, Brooks, you're not. It's clear that this animal is scared, but that's that, that's all you're getting in terms of like a reading, and it's it's trying to pull as far from you as possible. Its whining sounds like that of a dog, um, but it, ca it can't move any further away from you because the rope is uh, is fully holding it back. Uh, and Pontifex, you try to reach uh, with your mind uh, to to undo this knot, uh, but. It's it's just too tight, and from thirty feet away, it's it's hard to even see what you're doing. Okay. Sorry, Mimi. I guess your baby just isn't here. We'll, we'll keep looking. <laughs> I wonder where those other three got off to. Oh well. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep digging at the roots of this tree. <laughs> 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 It had to go down, that's the only direction left. <laughs> uh, uh, All right, Casimir comes up thing? next to you, Brooke, oh. and, yeah. uh, and draws a dagger and cuts through the rope. <laughs> and says, <laughs> <laughs> There! <laughs> Here you go. Uh, and the baby armor buster immediately begins to run away from you guys, and uh, Casimir's smile turns into a frown as he says, oh, oh, right. Well, you go catch it, Brooke. Huh, aren't you faster than me? I, yeah, it would be too easy for me. <laughs> Quick, use your blood curse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Do that. laughs> All right. If it's not <laughs> if it's not good, I will try to use that. Even though it's, it's probably oh. going to break free, right? I probably can't catch up to it. How fast is it? <laughs> it's a it's a little baby. Yeah, it's All like right. I'll fifteen run after feet it. per round. Oh, I'll catch it. I'll run after it. Where okay. is Tekka looking? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Attack is up in the trees. I guess so. <laughs> um, 
Okay, Brooke, you you easily outrun this uh, this little animal, um, and all that's left to do is actually catch it. Um, so <coughs> make a grappling check. It's your choice between athletics and acrobatics. Wait, no, what am I talking about? You're making the check, you have to use athletics. It's my choice of acrobatics and athletics. <laughs> uh. I have a feeling Brooks' athletics is a lot better than it used to be. I actually have a question on how I can... When I like click on, when I equip the, oh, I have to click a tune. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that makes a roll way better. It was a trap. <laughs> your your so strength is plus now at 21. Yeah. Nice. Uh, plus eight. Oh, you're proficient. Yeah, sure okay. am. Yeah, um, you catch this small, uh, this small ape. Um, and with with your newfound strength, uh, this is surprisingly easy. And as the as the baby uh, squeals in in fear and tries to to break free, you're just you're just holding it. Um, it seems weak and uh, thin. It's it's uh, not putting up much of a fight, not not because it's not trying, but it it, it can't. Huh? Anyone got any leftover fruits from earlier? Cast Pontifex. Please don't take it from Pontifex. He has a really old one. I do. It is beginning to move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cast. Do you have any left? He's uh, giving well, up on the cat. I've... That's going to be his next animal companion. <laughs> I've, I've... <laughs> I've got some jerky, but I'm not sure if this thing... Are they herbivores? I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. <sighs> Look, let's just... Um... Let's just yep. bring it back to the others. Oh, God. <laughs> My throat's going to be so angry at me. You know what? You hold it. Well... <laughs> 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 you, you hand over the baby ape to Casimir. <laughs> Casimir has that reaction where, like, somebody... <laughs> when somebody hands you a baby that you don't want to be holding. <laughs> just, uh, his arms extended as far as possible so it's as far from his face as he can. Um, and begins to just walk forward. Oh. <clears throat> the best possible three people to find this baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, until the the rest of you... <clears throat> where, where is... Where is Pip looking? Uh, <laughs> what's worse than a one? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Within I feel himself. like... <laughs> in in the mama's fur maybe he's in there <laughs> no like Pip probably doesn't even think the baby is even around here so he's he's like well we'll just I, we'll keep going that way <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, as you're still like from, from from what happened earlier you're holding on really tightly to the back of this armor bus too uh, and then at some point uh, um, you see her twitching her head turning and then you hear it too cries for help Ter terrified cries for help that that to you translate into yeah uh, uh, yeah into this request for help but to anyone else is just uh, the sounds of a baby armor bus too and mimi takes off and you oh, were already no. holding on oh. like as, as much as you could uh so you just you just lower your head and you you're you're uh you're part of this ride now and there's there's no leaving it uh, and as she pushes trees out of the way, um, she eventually comes face to face with Casimir holding up uh, her baby. And she breathes heavily at uh, this loud uh, uh, snorting. Um, <laughs> her breathing so uh, so deep that Casimir's hair is like pulled back from it. Um, and uh, he he smiles awkwardly and holds baby up to her. And 
He rolls a three on his animal handling check. <laughs> <laughs> he bears his teeth a little too much in that <laughs> smile. <laughs> yeah. uh, she stands up on, on two legs and reaches down with one hand, snatching the baby from Casimir's grip with such strength that he's knocked down on the ground. Uh, and people catching up from both directions, just you know, oh, as Casimir hits in, uh, the ground and rolls a few feet, and uh, uh, Mimi is reunited with uh, Bibi? <laughs> <laughs> with the Bibi, with yes. With the Bibi. <laughs> um, and uh, and she she holds the baby up to her face and uh, um, then sits down and begins uh, uh, grooming it and the baby just holds onto her neck uh, and and Pip finally the the sounds you're hearing from the both of them are uh, finally uh, more relaxed and happy. Mm. Yay. Pip will uh, carefully climb off of her back <laughs> now that she they're reaches there. with her you other no arm and grabs you. Oh! And, pu and puts you into her lap. And starts well. checking your hair. This oh, is you are my life too. now. <laughs> oh, do you want to leave us you are here? Now pee -pee. You want to? Do you want us to leave <laughs> you here? Pee -pee. Oh, I mean, you could, you could have a new. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna have a new life here. So. Uh, you know, uh, honestly, that's kind of tempting, but I think this thing is gonna suffocate me if I don't get all the ingredients, so I don't think I can stay here. Maybe later then. Uh, hey, hey, Mimi. It's been really great getting to know you, and I'm so glad that you found your, your, your kiddo. Um, but we got, we gotta get going. We've got our own lives to live. <clears throat> uh, Pip, roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Oh. Um, as you once again try to to break free from her from her grip, uh, she she puts you back uh, in her lap. Uh, but then she listens to you and uh, uh, finally picks you up and puts you on the ground. Uh, and uh, says food oh you you need food uh, pip reaches down and grabs the sh shachi and hands it out and uh, she gives it to <laughs> bibi uh, and then she places uh the the baby on her back uh, as uh, um it holds on with uh, with one hand and with the other starts eating the food uh, the fruit hungrily uh, and she she says you help me i help you um. uh, and she begins to move away from you mm, okay Pip follows her. Uh, Casimir picks himself up and uh, dusts his clothes, and he uh, he groans. He seems to have hit the ground pretty hard. Um, looks at the others and uh, seems unhappy about the development, but also starts following. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I um, need two volunteers to 
to uh, each of you roll a d100. Um, as uh, Mimi takes you, um, leads you away for about an hour, um, and then she tells you, Pip, to wait, and she climbs up a tree, and then she um, she comes back down. Uh, I trust Sid's rolls more than anything in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I think Sid oh. should roll. Sid, <laughs> roll a d100. You have been... You have been elected. Okay. Who's rolling the other? I'm okay. Kind of hot. I'll roll it. Uh, okay. I would. I would have said if it's a one net one guy who can roll, I could roll as well. So <laughs> I also got a net one. My, uh, <laughs> my <laughs> twenty to net one ratio is pretty favorable. So yeah, all right. All right. You yes. can go. <laughs> go for it, Matt. A <laughs> uh, forty-five. Right, so forty-five. Uh, okay, you're rolling that way. Got it. Got it. Got it. Ooh. Why is the result not showing up in chat? It's it hasn't stopped moving. It yet. moving. <laughs> it's oh. wiggling. <laughs> oh, wobble, 92. Wobble, wobble. I yes, <coughs> yes, Sid, yes. You're so good at this. <laughs> Those this high point, numbers are a good, good thing. <laughs> oh, it is. Is high good? Usually. Yes, obviously. You take 92 points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so she brings down a small sack. <clears throat> and as she uh, puts the sack on the ground, uh, Oh god, sorry, I'm I'm losing my voice. As she puts the sack on the ground, uh, she says to Pip, Sometimes, bird comes, wants things. We collect things, give them to her, and she gives food to us. You can take. Really? You sure you don't need it? You can take. Wow. Well, thank you. Pip will, uh, take it and, and look up towards Mimi and little BB on her back. And uh, BB wants more food. I will give BB more food. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, Pip will just, like, give, give Mimi a, a firm little pat on the side of, of one of her enormous tree trunk sized arms and say, you two take care of yourself. It's a crazy world out there, and there's probably still a bunch of those traps out there. So watch your step, okay? I will protect my baby. Baby. I know you will. BB. <laughs> and then, like, she, um, she brings one finger up against Pip's chest. Uh, it's just one finger, but it's enormous. And, like, even if her touch is very gentle, you still stagger backward a little bit. And as she, like, points at you, taps your chest, she says, BB. Hmm. Uh, and then Mimi turns around and uh, heads off. I'm gonna miss her. We gotta come back sometime. <sighs> well, maybe that'll be easier than we thought. What's in the yeah, sack? Well not going to miss her. <laughs> um, there is a small bottle inside uh, with uh, a liquid that is um, 
it's... Um... Ah... What? <laughs> Sorry, this description is, like, confusing me. A bottle inside with liquid. <clears throat> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just... Well, I, yeah, I, I am a little confused by how it is worded. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just gonna go with it. So it's a red liquid that seems pretty, pretty thick, almost oily-like. Um, and there are beads inside, sort of like marble-sized, a little bit smaller, that are clear, and they're floating around. It's a boba. <laughs> and okay, then, uh, you almost missed it, because it's uh, it was so small, uh, but there's also a ring inside of the little sack. Um, and uh, uh, this this ring is made of metal, so it's... Uh, um, it, 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 it's... Probably more shiny for uh, for glimmer's standards, <clears throat> uh, especially in sunlight. Although it doesn't have any gemstones, it's just it just seems to be made of steel. Uh, and the inside of the ring, the part that would be in contact with the skin, is covered in this very very thin layer of white fur. You have no clue where Mimi might have found these. I thought she are. got them from glimmer. <laughs> Uh, she says she trades things to Glimmer for food. Oh. So, like, yeah. she, Wait, she finds things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So I it, understand. So it's unclear okay. where Mimi herself might have These were things that these. she was going to trade to yes. Glimmer. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pip would sort of just show them off to, to the others. Look what Mimi gave us. I, uh, I don't think we appreciated the sheer magnitude of Glimmer's trade empire. <laughs> uh, well, these are certainly interesting. Uh, Glimmer won't be happy that we done and knocked one of her clients. Well, if she trades with the arm of Ostus, maybe she has more business here in this jungle than we thought. Maybe once more people come in here, it'll be better for her in the long run. I'm sure she'll understand. What do these do, Professor? Ah, Professor, what do these do? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this should be a check of some kind. No, use assuming. your magic. <laughs> oh. eh. Fine. I can only do one at a time. Really, I can only do one or else it will take a while. <laughs> so I guess I'll, I'll use my class thing to instantly do it on one. Okay, which one? Uh, which one? Mmm, the bottle of boba. Oh. <laughs> hey, Telex, you seem dejected. Why? <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Do you want rock, paper, scissors for it? What's a scissor? Boba scissors parchment exist. shears. I think scissors, yeah. Yeah, boba <laughs> parchment shears, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, how do we do this exactly, Pip? I mean, of course, I understand how it works. Well, it's very simple. Yeah, I mean, as two people sitting here face to face, seeing each other, this is very <laughs> easy to do. Yeah. So I go over to my little hidden zone, <laughs> and I draw. I draw. First thing you throw, what you zone. throw, and then I announce what I throw. <laughs> how about we just uh, simulate it with this cube? Odds or evens? Uh... Odds. What? Uh -huh. I got an odd. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> no, it was just... 
I I presented it. I win. Let the bloodshed ensue. Okay. I'll roll this. I'll roll again. Wait, no. Me too. No, no, we both we both chose Boulder. Now we gotta roll again. Wait, now we gotta do it again. Rocks. This is even. Even this time? Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Damn it. Why? Why did you roll again? I said I would roll. It's fine. It's odd on both of them. Why are you using two hands, Pip? I don't know. And why did you pick this. the same thing on both of them? <laughs> you had a good strategy there, albeit. <clears throat> first, I reclassed right, the sorcerer, first. then I twin the whole person on both of them, and then I identified Alex's. Okay, green. <laughs> what have we got? <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm a coffin fit. <laughs> what did you start with? <laughs> the ring. The ring, okay. Ah, uh, point effects. This is a ring of warmth. When attuned to it, you have resistance to cold damage. And uh, you feel comfortable in temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything you wear and carry is uh, uh, unharmed by such harsh temperatures. Uh, okay, yes, it is a ring that uh, cold does not affect you as much. It is effective up to uh, a negative 45.5556 Celsius. What? Sorry, Professor, what? I only understand Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, it is a ring uh, that protects you from the colder elements, and it is effective to temperatures as low as 227.594 Kelvin. Uh, you went the wrong way with that, right? Or wait, no, no, no. What? It is effective absolute... to as low as 227.6 Kelvin. Shouldn't... Isn't zero Kelvin like absolute zero? Or am I remembering that wrong? Correct. Zero Kelvin is the state in which nothing moves and matter stops to exist. What is this? <laughs> you're very session? educated for a young child. How do you know this? <laughs> oh yeah, no, you're right. Okay, sorry. The dolls speak to me things. <laughs> it is a very simple formula of taking the degrees Fahrenheit, subtracting a quantity of 32, and then taking that answer and multiplying it times 5 over 9, and then adding 273.15, and then you get Kelvin. Cool. Mm -hmm. Keeps you warm. Got it. Uh, yeah, leans towards in in layman's terms, yes. It is ring make warm. Kazumi leans towards Brooke and whispers, is that what I'm, is that what I'm becoming like? Like when I, when I get old, is, is that what I sound like? <laughs> uh, how do I tell you? Brooke, am I annoying? It takes uh, a few centuries to get this far. You're gonna be fine. <sighs> but you have to keep yourself in check. Oh no. I'm never reading a book again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pontifex, the potion is next? Uh, sure, but it takes 10 minutes, 11 minutes. I I feel like we have spent that amount of time already <laughs> on this loot, so we might as well. Sure, the verbal component, this is explaining the formula for finding yeah. Kelvin from Fahrenheit. Yeah. 10 minutes of that uh, until you 11. learn that this is a potion of growth. <laughs> Uh, when when you drink it, you gain the effect of the the enlarge effect of the enlarge slash reduce spell for one four hours. Uh, this is a substance when ingested. It uh, uh, seems to uh, increase your size by a quantity of two and increase your mass and density by a quantity of eight. Uh, drink this, get big. Huh. Uh, and stronger uh, proportionately, you could uh, add a, a statistically uh, about uh, 5 to 20 percent more physical damage when you punch something. <laughs> On a metric of uh, 1 to 20, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, yes, drink, <laughs> get big, punch hard. Uh, that's, that sounds like a Tekka thing. Oh, and uh, it grows the things that you're wearing and holding as well, which is uh, uh, similarly interesting. Your 10-foot pole would become a 20-foot pole. I suppose I... that's important for modesty. <laughs> I... Uh, magic does take that into I account. I was talking about clothes! <laughs> not the not, not whole thing. Not the 20th. That's, that's not honesty, that's the opposite. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a break here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what? we are magic dead in three. Magic for biological <laughs> kickstands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> so don't you all want to be wizards too? <laughs> oh my Bye. god, you guys. <laughs> Bye. Alright. So, uh, with having gone your separate ways from uh, from the Armabastu little family, you are ready to continue your journey. Uh, and you're headed for Urka, the colony of the gnomes. Um, the oh last... shit! I forgot. We can't go there. <laughs> Brought everything. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I forgot I... about it being the death colony. That's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> we have to like, go around wait, it. Wait, what did I forget? What's <laughs> what's happening? Um. <clears throat> Uh, the the last part of the journey with the uh, with the mom Armabastu uh, took you in pretty much the opposite direction. Uh, so once you once you say goodbye to her and her baby, uh, you turn around and start to heading to the southwest. Um, you don't progress much further before nightfall. Uh, so you uh, prepare yourselves for the night. The fruits that the Armabasu brought to you today were sufficient that you don't have to count down your rations for today. Uh, anything you need to do? Any preparations during the night? Or before the night? I will mean... just take a sweep for some ingredients, but that's it. Yeah, and uh, every night that we have a chance, it's like not too much trouble. Talix would like to try to gather food, maybe hunt? Uh, Just then... to help us get that little extra distance? Yeah, I'll take a survival check from everyone who tries to get food. Uh, Pip, you will also roll survival check, but for you it's for ingredients. We'll nice. be above a tent. Yes! Yeah. I called it! <laughs> you should have called higher. <laughs> that's that's my record for today. 11. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow! Okay. Rolls. Okay. Uh, Pip, for the time being, you really don't know what you're doing. You're just plucking anything that looks interesting or smells interesting and you figure that uh, eventually you you probably figure out what to do with these right um you yeah. have a nice uh, satchel full of uh, of little plants ah that's nice you can put it next to your pebbles one yes one two three four five ah uh, six um and between Brook and Talix, the amount of food that you manage to find that is uh, good to be eaten, fresh, uh, and uh, will not kill you, um, it's sufficient to cover one day's worth of rations from everyone. Uh, so today you're not counting the food down, and tomorrow you also yeah, you will not either. Nice. Awesome. Uh, the jungle, for all its uh, perils uh, that has presented to you so far, uh, it is uh, plentiful in terms of uh, food. Um, with your current position... Um, oh, actually, you are... Mm, no, not quite. <clears throat> uh, you still need somebody to make water daily. 
uh, for all of you. Mm -hmm. But that's not an issue for your group. <coughs> yeah, we blew up a robot with it. Uh, one quick note. Um, did did the Mama Armabastu take the whistle that made the Armabastu noise, or could Pip have no. taken that? Yeah, you can take it. Pip will take that. Uh, let me just write down Austin's uh, rules. I got it. Let's see. One. Two. Three. And four. The next couple of days, the journey southward is far more pleasant uh, than. Uh, your stay in the jungle has been so far. Um, you're you're traversing terrain that you have already seen before. Uh, here and there you recognize landmarks. Uh, there's even a moment where you look to the right and you can see far off in the distance the ruined tower. Uh, you have a pretty good idea of where you are and where you're headed, and you don't uh, um, you don't end up getting turned around. <clears throat> um, you come across one of the traps that you had already uh, disarmed and filled in. Uh, um, the the weather worsens a little bit, and there's there comes a moment uh, on the uh, on the second day since you said goodbye to the Armabasu, uh, when uh, you can you can feel the water falling down through the canopy. Every once in a while, a, a droplet of rain hits you on the head. Um, but the the simple fact that the threat of uh, the one who stares has been dealt with, um, that's enough to ease your minds. And you, you proceed slowly and, you know, to, to still watch out for the traps that still litter the jungle, and every once in a while you come across one. Uh, but you don't fall victims to any of them. Uh, Pontifex, are you, for the entirety of the journey, um, making sure that, like, the remains of the one who stares are with you on the floating disc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the okay. thing he's he's doing the ten minute ritual uh, every fifty minutes technically. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tekka enjoys taking a break every uh, that often. I imagine getting quick naps in. Mm hmm. Um. It's roughly around this area. Yeah. Boop. Well, it doesn't particularly matter, you know where you are. Um, <laughs> that uh, uh, Casimir stops and kneels down and looks at the ground. Um, he frowns, gestures for, for the rest of you to, to approach, and points down. And where the terrain here is a little muddy, um, has gotten, has absorbed just a little bit of water from the rain. Um, where he's pointing, you see a footprint. And then he points further up ahead, and you see another, and another, and then another. And uh, um, with Casimir pointing him out, uh, and his, uh, the, the dark expression that's on his face, um, you realize quickly, these feel... These are like... Um, these are the footprints of uh, a, a werewolf. There is no doubt about it. Oh. Somewhere halfway between a wolf and a man. And as Casimir points him out, he shrugs and says, "Well, I didn't leave these." Are you are you positive? Mm, no, no doubts about it. Yeah. Casimir puts like his foot next to one of them, and his little halfling foot is half the size of the footprint that's down. And there are no young teenage boy footprints <laughs> following it, right? <laughs> uh, roll survival check. 
also look for dragging mark and blood. Okay. You can also roll. Oh. Okay. And also centipede snakes. <laughs> sure. Is that survival or investigation? Survival. Are there any hexagonal footprints? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, both of your searches uh, uh, lead to nothing. No additional footprints besides uh, your own. Um, no indication that anything was dragged through here or that it was any fight. Well, uh, what do we reckon the odds are that it's our, uh, you know, our friend... Well, to my knowledge, um, there shouldn't be any werewolves on the peninsula besides the one you guys have encountered. And well. Well, wait, how did that happen to you? Oh, well, they, uh, it was not on the peninsula that I encountered one. But it was in Ladaria. Yeah, just further in. Past the lake, uh... Is this... This is not a nothing statement, right? Like, people aren't... Did we know that people went in there? Aside from Janiel? Went uh, beyond the peninsula? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're, the Plurians are allowed to explore further. They just can't live. They can't build. They can't, they can't uh, settle. Outside right. of the peninsula. Um, but most people don't, because most people are here to uh, actually live in the in the colonies. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the Jamil is not the only adventurer who has like pushed beyond the, the, the peninsula. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the odds are pretty good then. I, I believe so. Otherwise, this would be the first indication of another one that I didn't know about. Which direction do, do those prints go? To the northwest. Okay. Where we went the first time? Yeah. Sounds like it's been tracking Wait. us. Because we, we, were, we were here. And it went the way we went. Cosmere, how old are these footprints? Can you tell? Casimir uh, takes another look. Yeah, he gets down on, uh, on all fours and he looks at the ground. He touches it, smells it. Then he moves over a few feet. He looks around the area some more. Uh, oh, two. Three days? That would mean... Well, uh... What do you all reckon? Uh, do we... Do we just keep going? Or do we... We keep moving, expecting one day he will fulfill his promise. He's maybe a day behind us. We'd be taking him to Urka. Is that okay? Uh, he does not seem like he, he has any sort of blood vendetta against people in general, so I don't believe he would be a threat. Well, clearly they don't always control themselves. That's how this whole mess started. Well, just going off of his motivations for tracking and murdering us, I assume that uh, this wanton killing is not part of his personality. So we deal with this in Urka, potentially, or on the road rather than here. Right, either uh, he is able to control himself and will only come after us, or... He is not able to control himself, and as such, would not uh, 
revert to his feral state whilst uh, in innocence or uh, uh, liabilities. If we're in town, he's either going to kill us or he won't do it at all because there are people. I would assume. Hmm. <sighs> we did have the choice of taking care of him earlier and we decided against it. I'm not quite sure right, what changed The other now. option is for us to simply wait. Wait here and face the problem head on while we are at full strength. Are you willing to kill it now? I was never unwilling. I look at the others. What about you? If he attacks, I will protect myself. For the I sake mean, of the argument, uh, I understand his sentiments and that we made a mistake, and I'm willing to answer for it, but uh, not now. We have something too important, too pressing to deal with. And if he cannot understand that, then for the greater good, I'm willing to do what must be done. So, uh, what do we do? I say we keep moving, not waste time. One day he will come. I don't I don't think he'd attack us when we we're expecting it. Well, then if we always expect it. Then we don't get attacked. <laughs> sure. Uh, but let's prepare for the worst and just hope for the best. Two votes for leaving, two votes for waiting. Uh, <laughs> Talix, you okay? <laughs> Jason? Oh. Yeah, let's just keep moving. <laughs> A majority's decision. Alright. That's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I'm just rolling for the night. <laughs> scroll, scroll, scroll. I think with the revelation that we're being tracked, uh, S Squeak would stay up for one of the watches too. Second yeah. or third, probably. Yeah, sure. Roll, roll his perception check. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This night, uh, Brooke, during your and Casimir's shift, uh, Casimir is visibly on edge, and he spends most of that time uh, pacing back and forward. Um, there's a few moments when he said, snaps to one side, like he heard something. He smells the air, grunts, annoyed, frustrated. Uh, after half an hour of this, uh, he uh, he comes over to you and says, I think I'm smelling him, but it's weird. I could have sworn, uh, sworn he came nearby, but now the smell is further away. Well, 
He's probably doing what any good hunter is doing. <laughs> Checking out the surroundings first, right? Making a plan on how to attack. <sighs> Bruka, run it by me one more time. What, what did you do to, to this guy? Well, we had a phantom <laughs> mission. Um, taking care of a wolf that would steal or kill all the farm animals from the town. And so we went into the woods and found a wolf attacking two kids. And while defending the kids, we killed the wolf. And then kind of took all the gemstone from it. <laughs> Right, to... the, the, the ruby step. Yeah. And when we came back later, uh, we found the werewolf guy, and he was looking for his wife. So apparently the wolf we killed was his wife that was protecting their kids. And after the mother was dead, the kids were defenseless and got killed by all bears, I think. Something like that. So he got very angry. Understandably. <sighs> well, you guys might have been able to eventually reason with the giant tape. But there's somebody who is specifically out to uh, for revenge. Someone with such a personal vendetta against you? Uh, you know, if he shows up, I, I will not hesitate to resort to, to violence. I mean, you we saw the to... vote, right? I I was. back Even back then, I was for going after it there, because you know how it is. If something is tracking you down, you're rather one to take the first jump, right? And not let him get an advantage. Yeah, yeah. But, well, you, you're you're you a group. The of the group. Which is fine. You guys should make decisions based on the on the majority. Uh, but I am a phantom, and I am unaffiliated with the rest of you. So um, I'm just letting you know. Just at least give these people a chance to try their thing and do it at least a little bit before you attack. Keep in mind mm -hmm. that we do have a kid with us, right? And that he is the kid one that terrifies has... me. Are, are, are you joking? Have you seen him? Have you seen his dolls? Every morning. Uh, last night, one of them was next to me. And I woke up and it asked me if I wanted to keep it. <laughs> what I did the last time when I woke up to that thing is I took the doll and threw it, and threw it at Pip. Feel free to do the same. It's his doll. Those are his dolls after. Uh, um, okay, yeah, all right. I, I have permission to break a, a child's toy. <laughs> sure. But yeah, if, if the werewolf shows up, the group will try to reason with it. And it will fail. So. <clears throat> Once you realize that the... Uh, Reasoning is to no afford. Do you think? Until then, please give these people a chance. Uh, roll a persuasion check, Brooke. Oh, come on. Where's the belt of persuasion? Can I hold this persuasion <laughs> chainsaw? <laughs> chainsaw. <laughs> Oh! Swings around, take a saw. The saw worked! <laughs> All you had to do was summon it, speak it slowly. <laughs> nat 20. Um, yeah. Does it count as a nat 20? It, yeah, yeah, it's a nat 20. Let's go. <coughs> um, although, like, for, for checks, it's not necessarily an automatic success. But mm -hmm. for, for attacks, it would be even if it was a, a negative. Um... Okay, 18. 
Casimir crosses his arms and he, he looks a little annoyed. He sighs and says, well, I must be getting soft. I mean, after all, you had enough time to take care of it, right? After I sent you the letter? But, uh, like a week? Was it actually only a week? <laughs> a week is nothing for you, Cass. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You, you do it your way. But, um, you know, if if we don't find it here while I am with you guys, I will still be dealing with him my own way. Of course. But for now, I will do as you ask. Hold on a second. He looks over to his left. Brooke. I smell him. there? How close? Yeah. Oh, shit, okay. Oh, wake the others. Alright. I'll make my way through everyone. Wake them up. Oh. Stay quiet, everyone. Apparently Cass smells a werewolf. Do you want to keep me? <laughs> I'll take a ball and throw it in, Pip. <laughs> There's an extra Pip. <laughs> it wakes up Never no mind. matter who wakes up. Never mind. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. Brooks <laughs> Casimir takes a few steps away uh, from the camp and he's looking up ahead. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can hear him. Brooke, I'm going to try to get around him, okay? I mean, sur have him surrounded? Yep, sounds good. Keep an eye out. Yeah, no, you guys that's... pick up your weapons. Well, or uh, you're. Be prepared to talk to him, or whatever it is you guys do. You guys hear a low humming of goat bleating as Pontifex <laughs> is readying a toll the dead for if it takes hostile action. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> the ominous bleating. <laughs> Any preparations any of you would like to do? I don't like Casimir going off. That is not what you do in a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna, we're gonna hear him just scream he's... a blood curdling scream. I'm gonna go hide in the room that's full of chainsaws and chains. You'll <laughs> <laughs> never look there. Yeah. I will ready my shield and I will keep an eye uh, a hand on a dagger. And sure. same condition as Pontifex. Yeah, shield armor and stick for Talks. Oh yeah, yeah, Pontifex has his shield for sure. Okay. Uh, I'll take a perception check from everyone. I don't like the dead silence. Oh, <gasps> painful. Oh, 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 nice. I got my best roll of the day, and Sid gets his <laughs> third match <laughs> of the day. <clears throat> oh my god, he has twice as many nat 20s and nat 20s. 12? <laughs> 12? That's how I was until last session when I hit another nat 1. Oh, it did. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, both Tekka and uh, Talix are the first ones to hear it. After some faraway shuffling, a twig snaps, and then noises of a, uh, of a scuffle. The voice of Casimir, and then another voice. Uh, and... Moments later, Casimir comes out from the uh, from the uh, undergrowth, um, 
pushes through the bushes and <laughs> um, and is dragging from one arm uh, <laughs> a fortress. No! <laughs> no! I knew it was gonna. I knew you were gonna do that shit to us. God damn it! <laughs> no! I, uh, I oh, knew he's it. Tiny. Hold on. Did he get wolfed? Yeah, he got wolfed. No! Fuck, Fortis! <laughs> ah! And you know his fault, Addis. <laughs> Ours. Uh, okay, so I did not. I, 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 I don't think you guys know this, this boy. And uh, oh dear, Fortis it hastily climbs down from the tree. <laughs> um, Fortis doesn't look too good. Um, his clothes are covered in mud and torn in multiple, multiple uh places. Uh, he has his old backpack on him that is, um, it's full of things but also it's barely um holding together uh his hair is a mess um and as he as he stumbles forward and he sees the rest of you uh he um uh sighs and and, and uh, with this bit of like a almost like an awkward kind of uh, uh demeanor he says uh hey i've been looking for you Huh. Does he look um like injured or just like rough? Like he's just been out here a while. Um, mainly rough, and he does have like okay. a lot of uh, like the the end of his pants. Uh, there is there is a thorny vines that have gotten caught to it, and you can see that he has multiple scratches uh, on his hands <laughs> and legs. But they all seem to be just from uh just from navigating this jungle, not from like a fight. Uh, I guess Pontifex is going to step up within 10 feet of him and instantaneously clean uh, his... I, I don't think a, a face counts as an object, but <laughs> whatever. I, an I object no larger than a cubic foot. I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to try to press the digitation and just, like, clean him up a bit. Mm-hmm. What? what? F Fortis? What? What are you doing out here? Like I said, I was looking for you. Uh, um, so, uh, I suppose uh, you have a story to tell, huh? <laughs> yeah, I... I really need your help. Oh, hold on. Okay, okay, do you have any food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you a asked. Light. I'm a little light on the meats, but uh, I'll probably have something for you. Good that I convinced Cass, huh? Not your deck. Yes, if only we listen to your past <laughs> advice. <laughs> we were all broke. We were definitely going to jump this kid. <laughs> you hold us back. <laughs> Yo, know, you know what, Alex? You're welcome. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, as as Fortis is approaching the camp, you, uh, those of you facing him, you see Casimir pointing at Fortis and, and like he e extending his arms just uh, on his sides, like in a, in a in a shrug gesture, as he uh, silently mimics just a word. What? Brook shrugs. The one. Sorry, that didn't come through. This isn't the one. This, uh... This was one of the kids... Oh. Wait, we didn't tell you this story. We can't explain this. Yeah, it's, it, it's uh... T T T it's not the one. Alex, he... He smells like wolf. Yeah. Yeah? What, what do you mean, yeah? He went after it. I don't think you get what I'm trying to say. Um, you, you let Fortis like sit over here by by the campfire. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're all just gathered around him. Um, I, I I missed it. Who's giving him food? I will if no one else can. I I, I think I've got too. If he wants it to be a little more zesty, I have this yellow spice. 
Um, just okay, boulder it. part and sh- parts and shears. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, I'm not the one to just feed him a jar of the devil's spice, but <laughs> if he wants it to be a little more ferocious, it can be. Okay, I'll be one, and then we go clockwise. Easy peasy. I'm glad we can just resolve everything. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, good thing Tekka volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tekka just like kind of throws a pack of dried meat. Uh, no, Tekka is dadding away. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that, Sorry. that was very cool. <laughs> I, I didn't gonna... see you had a place in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, throws the pack towards the, the group. Yeah, uh, Fortress <laughs> catches it. Did, did, did oh. I interrupt you mid sentence? No, carry on. Okay. Um, and he he is very obviously hungry. He just uh, he's going to de- to devour what what food you have uh, given him. Um, and as he just starts as he starts taking larger bites, uh, uh, he says, "Okay, um, I don't know how to put this." But uh, I can't stay home with mom and the uh, alien. Um, n- not anymore. What did you do? I didn't do You did. Anything. What did you do? Well, I... I it's just... It, 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 everything... Uh, changed since you guys showed up. Uh... It wasn't since you guys showed up, it was since I and, and Alien went after that wolf and, and, and we nearly died. And, uh, uh, um, I was feeling really sick for, for a little while, but I felt way better. And I could lift ways that I, that I couldn't lift before, and I, it was great. <laughs> but my, uh, all my work was paying off and um, for a few days everything was fine and then it wasn't Uh uh-huh is casimir in casimir form at the moment yes casimir is keeping some distance kind of like tekka is because you seem really worried but if he's like you what's the difference He's not like me. He's not a phantom. Pretty sure there's a difference between willingly doing this and stumbling upon that power. What? what? Wait, you do this on purpose? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, okay. What are you talking about, Fortis? Um... He finishes his food and he's uh, just uh, twirling his fingers and he takes a deep breath and says, "Well, um, well, one night I, I left because sleeping had had gotten uh, difficult for for a while, and then I, um, uh, actually I don't remember much of what happened that night, but I have some some flashes of of memory and." Uh, uh, and I was in in the forest, and it, I w- was not myself. And it's happened a few more times, and now I know what that's like, and I don't know how to handle it, and I don't want to be l- Port- like this. Portis, it'll be all right. We this existed in Plurna too. There are people who can who can help you out of this. Is it you? Can, can you help me? You got rid of my injury, uh, right? I can... Uh, I don't know how to do that, but I know people who do. Uh, can you take me to them? Well... I guess at this point, now that we've talked to Vary and Thor, Maybe I could. Oh, okay. 
thank the really? gods. I, I I couldn't think of. I didn't know what else to do. I I I don't really. I don't like Lady Sarabeth. Um, and I wasn't going to tell mom. I, uh, what do the moons look like? <laughs> uh, today, tonight. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one of them is uh, almost. Uh, it's a uh, uh, a new moon, and the other is in its last quarter. <clears throat> oh, we got plenty of time. What? <clears throat> What? What is this? Is I mean, is this a, a is this a disease or or is it something more? Sort of both. But I mean, but you really got rough. rid of my you got rid of my thing in the yeah. jungle. Yeah, it's not just a disease. It's magical, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Cosmere, you probably know better than I do. I just know it's really difficult to deal with, but... Uh, <laughs> it's not exciting. I, I, I don't know how to cure it. I know how to spread it. <laughs> and I feel like that's but... the opposite of what you want to achieve right now. But as I've the DM told me some time ago when I <laughs> asked about this, <laughs> yeah, uh, there are clerics who can do this, and I'm assuming that the powerful one that I know back in Aria, at least, if not one of the other ones we can find, <clears throat> maybe can do it. That's an assumption that that you can make. Yeah, you'd imagine like he is the most powerful cleric closest to you that you know of. Um, if Divine, Divine Magic can do this, you have, like, almost no doubt that somebody, like, a Baryanthar could do it. Uh, uh Casimir. Uh, Casimir, they're uh, looking a little anxious, he says, uh, to, to, to my knowledge, um, I, I, I don't know how to get rid of this. But... You look like you do. But uh, he, he, here's the thing that worries me. I, I was under the impression that this, this werewolf that is after you guys is only after you guys. And I uh, see, but if he's going around t t turning people, uh, that is a very different kind of problem. Wait, so Fortis, you said this happens not because you went after him again, but this happened after your encounter with, with, uh, with the wolf that we met. I, uh, I think so. And the, what of your little brother? Well, I, I didn't ask him directly because I, I didn't want to worry him. But I sort of, you know, I asked if he was doing okay, if there was anything he needed to tell me about, uh, anything off, uh, if he was feeling okay, and to, to all my questions, he said he was fine. Oh, well, that settles it. He's definitely not turned. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, that's... Yeah? <laughs> I sense this sarcasm in your voice. Well, um, maybe if... If I could imagine myself being in that situation, I'd probably not give up that information so willingly. <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm i glad you felt okay telling us this. Uh, but I think we can all agree, right, that we should help you get cured of this? Yeah. I don't think we have any other choice, right? Maybe we do. What's that? I mean, um... Remember when I tried to get... That thing off my neck? Uh-huh. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't... I don't know if it would do anything, but... I don't, mm, I could try. What if it doesn't work? Does it hurt him? I don't think so. But if this thing isn't a normal disease, then maybe it's something magical that I could, that I could break. I think there's some elements of magic to it, at least. Something... Something abnormal. Maybe you could? <sighs> Granny... Granny taught me a lot of things, and... I, I've been learning over the last few... weeks or so... how to do some of the things she does. And... I'm... I've sort of learned how to reverse some of it, too. But I don't know if that's the kind of magic that's that's on Fortis right now. But I could try. Any objections to this? As long as it can't hurt him, there's no reason not to try. Fortis? Whatever you can do, let's try it. Your, your mom and your brother, they're really worried about you. Your mom was even thinking about going back to Plurna with you and your brother. Would you like that? Uh, I actually used to like it here, but... These last few months, <laughs> that they haven't been good to us. Maybe home back in Plurina is better. What's the point of being here without father, anyway? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd like to go back. We all do. And I know that... Uh, that a mom and alien are, are, are worried, but I, I I couldn't just stay with them. I was I was afraid of hurting them. You did the right thing. <laughs> I was mad at you at first when I got this letter from your brother, and he holds it up in the air. But I get why you did it. And <laughs> a letter. Mm hmm <sighs> Looks like your brother used some of that paper your mom got him to write this. He's been drawing a lot lately. He's really good. I want you to be able to go back home. <laughs> and not everyone gets that. So... For your sake, and for your family's sake, I really hope this works. And Pip's going to step forward and touch him on the chest and try and cast Remove Curse. Okay. Pip. <clears throat> Roll an Arcana check. Okay. <clears throat> you got this. <laughs> we'll see. <gasps> oh! Told you. I think you need more encouragement of me. <laughs> I never doubt you, Pip. <laughs> Pip, uh, your hand shakes a bit. The first and only time you have used this magic, uh, it backfired. And it was one of the most terrifying experiences that you've ever gone through. 
and for a moment flashes of, uh, of memories from that day uh, the pain you felt in your shoulder the the fear and the shame trying to hide it from your companions for hours at a time almost an entire day you wouldn't wish that kind of experience upon anyone else especially not one of the kids you've actually become friends with but you trust your gut at uh, this time you do you don't feel like this is something uh, that uh, uh, you're not trying to get around something that uh, uh, granny has uh, has created this has nothing to do with her and your understanding of the magic of this land uh, um, it gives you this feeling you got this you touch Fortis upon, uh, on one of his arms. Uh, you speak words that nobody here understands. And Fortis takes a deep breath and waits. And waits. He raises an eyebrow. I is it done? Yeah. Uh, I don't... I don't really... <clears throat> he, uh, shakily pulls away from you. Uh, he stands upright and he uh, takes another breath and he looks around and he closes his eyes and he says, Wait, I... I... I feel different. I, I, I feel different. Good different? I feel... I feel, uh... Uh... You. And he looks at Brooke and he comes over. Uh, and he puts his arms around your waist. And uh, tries to lift you up. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well... And he doesn't really manage to, to lift you a single inch <laughs> from the ground, and that for some reason makes him incredibly happy. It worked? Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, uh, I think so. I'm... I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Pip! He, he... he hugs you. He throws his arms around the, around your shoulders and just hugs you. Pip hugs back, but there's a little part of him that's a little bit jealous. <laughs> Kazimir leans towards Alex and says, oh, yeah, he smells a little better now. That's quite the kid you got there. It certainly is. Well done, Pe It was impressive. Uh, like, magically speaking. That was, uh, that was high level stuff. Really? Do you think I could teleport now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can try. It is not a question of ability. I am fully confident that if you decided to, you would be able to learn it with little difficulty, but uh, <laughs> I don't think you can just decide to do it. But it, it is no longer a question of ability. You were more than capable. We should... We should get Fortis home, then. Okay, how are we going to do this? We have to be in so many places. <laughs> well, you can probably just travel with us along the journey we're already taking. At least once we get him to the road, he'll be a lot safer traveling back. All right, or if we can simply take him to uh, uh, that. Uh, I can't read it. Erka, uh, Erka, Erka, Erka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, at least that'll be on the road, and. If we're going back to Simli Lawn, you could travel with us there, too. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, we have a, if that's a where bit, of, bit of a hook up there. I'm sure that old Kai Lu would uh, 
do us a solid? Probably. Or at least the town mayor would do something about this. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Uh, for, for, for bothering you like this. You're not a burden in any way. That's fine. <laughs> You're just... Got a little lost, and we need help, but it's no trouble at all. <laughs> like I said, we're already going that way. Thank you. Uh, all of you, thank you. Uh, and we're gonna end the session here. Damn! Um, Dang. To success. Good job. <laughs> Good Very job. Oh. Yeah, I didn't expect that to work. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm really? very pleased. <laughs> like it wasn't until you mentioned it that I, like, remembered that you actually could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I I was thinking in my head that it was like some something like greater restoration for some reason. <laughs> wow. Um. Yeah, I've been I've been holding on to the. <laughs> that was good. The fact that Fortis said, uh, uh, yeah, I had this going on for a really long time, but uh, boy, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Great twist. That was, that was fun. <laughs> and good job calling it, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was, I was going to ask Cass if he wanted to, you know, if he wanted the treatment too. <laughs> but I have a feeling he wouldn't say yes. Yeah, his his was explicitly willing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After after the last time Pip did it, he was like, "Okay, won't do that again." <laughs> <laughs> but um, knowing that it it he can undo this sort of magic on other people now, like he's thinking about Raquela and how it may be too late for her. He's thinking about. A certain snow globe in his pocket? <laughs> the possibilities are endless. <laughs> so many curses everywhere. <clears throat> Everyone is cursed. If he used it on Tekka, Tekka would disappear. Tekka's not cursed! <laughs> <laughs> Tekka would disappear! Tekka's not cursed! <laughs> uh, I think I missed the context for uh, that. We oh, don't know Because Jamiel in his book claimed that Tieflings... Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone right. seems to be on that that thought, I guess, except for Sysa. I thought we were all pretty, like, yeah, like, from everything we found, that's it seems to be, like, unanimously agreed upon that this tiefling thing is occurring, and Tekka's just not accepting <laughs> nope. it, but Italics nope. isn't either, that's cute. Pontifex believes it. I mean, I don't know what... Uh, <laughs> you are what you believe. Like, try to fall somewhere in the middle of that, like... Not, not that... Tieflings inherently are cursed, but maybe there is something, like, more... I don't know. There's something more. There's something <laughs> more. Ah. I mean, do you think mules are cursed? Well... Who? Mules? No, <laughs> so, obviously, the concept of a half-breed, like, Lodorian <laughs> pertinent person is not... <laughs> that's not the that's not the issue. Obviously Talix wouldn't think that. <laughs> Thanks right. for the session. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you for being here. Um decide uh, during the week how to divide out the the ring and the potion that you got. Yeah. And the belt. Nope. <laughs> that is they already decided. <laughs> I'm already full on attunement slots, y'all. <laughs> All dolls. <laughs> Two dolls and a rock. <laughs> yeah, I don't Tal have any. Talix has the other doll. Wait, is the ring of warmth an attunement thing? It is. Mm. Uh, yes. I mean, I have resistance to cold damage at will. If we're, if we're, I feel like something about, like, we're just gonna keep in our pocket and see when it's needed. Well, yeah, but you have to attune to it, which takes like an hour or something like that. So, oh well, yeah, so but I mean, need... I don't think. I think we. 
What, like, unless we get jumped by a frost-breathing creature? I think more generally it would be like, I mean, oh, we're about, we're about to go somewhere really cold, let's... One of us should be wearing it anyway. Because yeah. does, does it only affect the wearer? Yeah. Everyone else would just have to wear coats. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, I think I have something racially with... Uh, I don't. Is there such thing as an equator in this land? Like... That's a spoiler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does, well, does I guess the sunshine we shine move certain places? Is I Plurna a globe? Because, like, we left Plurna, right? Like, we would have had, like, a crazy, quote-unquote, bird's-eye view of it, sort of. Hmm. Is the earth flat here? Uh, and no. this is where I end the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I guess our viewers will never know the answer. <laughs> oh no, what a shame. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Aww, but was... no. Oh. Plurna. It's, it's... Is, is Plurna a globe? Plurna is flat. Plurna is flat. What? Well, all the all the <gasps> planes the are globes, technically. But Plurna is flat. Oh yeah, because you did describe them as spheres to begin with. <laughs> Whenever you're describing like the elemental planes of like fire yeah, and all that, you were describing all, them as spheres. They're bubbles. Yeah. Bubbles. But Plurna's flat. Because yeah, Plurna's at the intersection of four of them. So what's at the edge of? Oh, wait, no, you, this, this is literally in the description. Never mind. Like, at one of the ends, it's just like a sea of fire. Yeah. Yeah. No, it goes, it goes crazy. Cause, okay, cause so it's less that it's flat over. and more that, like, it... Instead of one globe, it's four of them that are kind of, like... Like, are they fully overlapped, or is it just, like, the overlapping section of it? Like a Venn diagram, but with four of them? It's a Venn diagram of the four of them. Okay. And so within that space, like it's yeah. organized. Last. There you have it. And this, this is the Plurna. So it's a, it's a, it's a flat ellipsoidal. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of a different. And like, you know, the, 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 the continent of Plurna looks like this. I was thinking of something like this and that this is. Learning. Okay, hey, cool. I like it. Yeah. And the water doesn't wait, so the water doesn't directly give way to like the pillar of fire, earth, or whatever. There's like more space surrounding it before you go into the elemental planes, right? Yeah. Uh, well, there's the parts where like it intersects some planes but not the others, so it just depends on which direction you go. Are there chunk errors, like at the end of the... <laughs> yes. Like here. Are there farlands? Farlands. 